Okay, sorry about me being late. I was um having some problems. I was I was here at eleven o'clock. I'm trying to. I was on another computer and I had to install GoToMeeting and all this on it. So, apologize for the delay. What's going on, everyone? Everybody said, "Where where you been? Where you been?" It's like I'm here. I'm here. All right. Everybody see the screen. All right. Um, you know, I did a negotiable instruments webinar. Everybody's complaining, talking about it was 15 minutes long or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what happened with it. I don't know if I didn't push the record button or whatever, but I can't find the recording anywhere. So, you know, this is uh, I'm doing another one. Uh, you know, so we can uh so you'll have it. Uh another recording on that. I'm going to start off with questions because I'm sure a lot of people got questions, but let me start off by saying this. All right. I'm going to make an announcement first and I want everybody to listen to me very carefully. If you are a federal agent on this line, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not smart enough to invade me into saying something that I don't want to say. If you ask me a question about purchasing something with a negotiable instrument, I'm going to automatically presume and assume that you are an agent. If you ask me about something about taxes, I'm going to automatically assume and presume that you're an agent. You have to understand, I've already been through the federal system. I understand what they do and how they go about doing it. Okay. So I'm telling you right now, all right, I'm not teaching you this. So you can run out and buy things or do things, but this is for set off. This is how it was originally done and the original intent and purpose of it. What you are doing is y'all allowing agents to come in and trick y'all into doing things so they can put charges on you and then defame the whole movement. And I'm not going to allow that to happen because you want something for nothing or you want some free shit. It's not happening. My intent and purpose is to teach you this so you understand principles. A lot of you are interested in the secure party process. So I'm going to teach you the process the way it was originally done. And then afterwards, you can go out and do whatever you want to do. But in no shape, form, or fashion will you be uh, saying, well, you Savelle told me to do this or told me to do that because I'm on a recording telling you not to do this and not to do that because I know how people are. I know how snitches are. I know how agents are. I know how people are who are just not very intelligent and who don't listen very well. I know how these people are. I know the hearts of men. So do not ask me certain questions about things. And if you know anything about me, if you ask me the question, I'm probably pretty much going to air you out in front of everybody too because I'm at that point. I'm here to teach you things. Keep your questions directed about the subject matter and the content of what we are speaking about. If you start asking me questions that are all point, I'm going to remove you from the webinar. I'm going to kick your ass out. I feel like it was a lot of agents on the last webinar that I was at. I'm sure people are giving links to people uh, for people who haven't paid or to be attendees of this and so forth. Those those type of things happen and stuff like this. But I just want to make that perfectly clear. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the phone lines. I'm going to let you because I know a lot of y'all haven't spoken to me in a while. And I know y'all have a lot of questions about things. So I'm going to start out asking questions. Um, so if you have any questions about something, now's the time. You know, hit your hit your hit your button, and I will open up your mic. Derek Carter, your microphone is open. God, peace of God, peace, God, peace. Man, it's good to hear from you. Man, I was up in your neighborhood with that tornado too, brother. Uh, but good to see you doing good. My first question is uh, on this uh, negotiable instrument and uh, the barcode on Photoshop. I sent you a couple of uh, uh, messages as far as trying to edit that. And it won't allow you to extract that out of that background. Okay, let me show you how to put a barcode on it. Now, the barcode was my own um, addition to the negotiable instrument. And I'll tell you why I put it on there. Because the, the uh, IRS treasury checks that you get, um, or uh, the, uh, no, I'm sorry, the um, uh, 
uh, the statements that you receive from them. I noticed that they put the barcode on there with your social security number. And I'm sure it's for processing purposes and things like that. But adding a barcode and editing it is a very, very simple matter. And I'll show y'all how to do that right now. Hold on for a second. And uh, let me uh, pull up a... uh, I want to see what was the barcode that was on the uh, money order. Well, well, that's why I'm, I'm gonna you can, the barcode I'm gonna show you can put on anything. I mean, you put on uh, anything. Uh, all you do is you go to uh, the internet and you can go to any barcode generator. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them are free, custom barcodes in seconds. All right, this is one I I, I usually go to, and you can put the number is in. And uh, I usually go to advanced options and I uncheck draw border because I don't want to border around it. Uh, and then I uh, simply click generate barcode. It's going to make it into a PG, P, uh, PNG format. Okay, this, just... oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm sorry. This, <laughs> let me go back. Wait a minute, where's... Oh, okay. Hold on. I'm sorry. All right. There you go. Y'all hey, see that? All right, let me go back. All right, let me let me start over. All right, I'll just I'll go to Google and I'll put in barcode generator in Google. And I'll just Google something. This is a pretty good one right here. I've used different ones. And when they'll see the screen come up, this is barcodes incorporated. I'll just put in whatever verbiage or numbers I want to put in. Then I click on advanced options and I uncheck where it says draw border. Then I click generate barcode. All right, it's gonna generate the barcode for me, all right, which is right here. Okay, the next thing I'm doing, I'm gonna uh, right click it and click save image as. All right, and I'm gonna say this to my downloads. All right, and then I'm gonna go back over here. And right here, you can see I have already something up and check for me. I'm gonna stop. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start stop directing y'all toward these checks because too many people are getting in in trouble. So I'm 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 going to show y'all how to do the documentary drafts because these checks are just getting people in trouble. And you got people on the internet; they want the rowdy numbers on the shit. So I'm like, y'all have no idea what a negotiable instrument is about. So you know, I'm I'm just not even gonna. I'm not even going to uh, use that anymore. All right, so right here we got the uh, barcode. I think this is it right here. Yeah, this is it. So here's the barcode right here. All right. So what I can do is, uh, let me see if it's already, it might already be in PDF format. So I'll click select all, edit, copy, go to my check, and then click edit, paste. Okay, so it's not... Right now, you see it's it's got white in it, so that that right there is not what you want. So I'm going to delete that, All right, and I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to make it bigger. I go to image and image size. It's 96 pixels for inch. I'm going to make it 200 to make it bigger so you can see it. All right, so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, now watch very closely what I do. I go to select. And then I go to color range. And then I'm going to just touch this eyedropper in the black. Just click in the black. Then I'm going to click OK. All right. That black was actually the white. It has highlighted everything in the white. Now I'm going to go to select and click inverse. And then I'm going to click edit and cut. All right. It just cut everything in the black. Well, it should have. Let me see if... uh, don't look like it did it. Oh no. Yeah, there you go. All right. So it cut everything in the black. You can see right there. Okay. Now I'm going to click edit and free transform. And that's going to allow me to do whatever I want to do with it. Then I click right here, the arrow, click apply, and then I can move it where I want to move it to, anywhere on this document. Okay. Is there something you missed on that? Oh. 
<clears throat> not on that particular, not on that particular uh, example. Like I said, on the money order, I was trying to use a template that was already preset on there. And, and as far as that, I was able to change. Oh, you, can't, uh, you can't, you can't, you can't, you cannot, you got to generate the, uh, the, the barcode. These barcodes are scannable. They will, you take your camera phone and you scan it. It's going to scan with that right. number. Okay. So no, you can't edit that in Adobe Photoshop. You have to go to barcode generator and generate. This is the only way to do it. To edit it the way that right. I'm showing you right now, I'm so you would, about, have to, you would have to be on that money order, delete that barcode that's already on that money order, and yeah, add, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. You can't you can't get to that barcode it, no matter where you're at on it. I tried I tried clicking all over. Money order, what money order are you talking about, and what is it? Another uh, webinar I got, or what? What, what it money? Was, order? It was it was one that was in the Dropbox because I was trying to put all my instruments together, you know, and. Uh, the the background is on that and the uh, lawful order for money. Well, lawful order for money. Okay, let me look at it real quick. Let me see. It's got, it's got a bar. I've got, already got a barcode that I've generated. It's got my information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got you yeah you you, you want to generate your own. Um, you really want to make your own instrument. Period. But uh, right, let me look and see what you're talking about. Um, hold on. Let me. Get, I'm going into the folder now. Where is it at? Okay. All right, let's see. So it's um, resource. is it in rep resources and resource material, and then uh, might be in yeah. There we go. Dolph order for money. Do that one. Okay, so yes, right there. These are P. These are all PDFs right here. This is a PSD file right here. Right. All right. And so R code right there. So you you. When you pick, when you pull that up in Photoshop, you know, of course, all those those fields are editable. So right. but that barcode, whenever you click on it, you can't you can't extract it, you can't delete it off of that form and well, add your own. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, hold on, let me just let me uh, open it up for you. All right, so here it is, right here. All right, right, when you look over here, this is your, your control panel over here that'll let you know what can and you can and cannot do. All right, so if we want the barcode right here, which is, uh, let's see, where is that? That's the background. Museum, lawful order for money. There it is. Never mind, that's long. <laughs> Let me see. Bar house joint resolution. Hold on, let me go back. Oh, this must be it, right? Loan. No, that's a loan number. Bank settlement. You know what? It's probably um, yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's there it is right there. All right, that's it right there. Layer yeah. four. Okay. Yeah, it's in the background. Um, okay. Let me uh let me correct that real quick. Let me just uh, get that in there like that. That's really interesting how I would do that. How I did that. Yeah, that, um, like I said, that document and the money order are the exact same way. Yeah, I'm just going to delete that. Awesome. All right. And let's see. I'm going to uh, add a, um, this is the background layer right here. I think that's, uh, I don't. Hold on, this is background. Let me see. Let me see what this background. Yeah, let me get rid of this background, and I'm gonna add a delete layer, and I'm gonna add a layer to it. And I'm gonna make this layer. The background. And I'm gonna move it. And I am going to let's see. Let me highlight 
playing it. Uh, wait, where's my flood field? Options, okay. Where's my hold on? Let me see some. Yeah, that's right. So, all right, all right. That should uh, that should take care of it. All right, so let's see what we got now. All right, so everything on here should still be edible. Yeah, it's still edible. Yeah, and now you can add your your uh. Like that, all right. Okay, and, okay. Uh let me edit. Where is it? Where is that? I should have labeled everything on here a little better too, so y'all wouldn't be getting confused, but um you know. <laughs> all right. All right, so let me uh, save this. And uh, that's a lawful order for money. Oh, you know, I got to re-upload it back. So let me do two. And I'll have it in there at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar. But that's oh. how that's how you if you learn how to work with layers and Photoshop. Let me tell you something. If you can learn to do Photoshop. You're you can do anything with negotiable instruments in Photoshop. Anything you 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 can you won't be restricted in any kind of way. Even with adding rowdy numbers, I mean, all you got to do is get some microphones and you can add it. I do yeah. not suggest adding rowdy numbers. Obviously, um, there are so many things, but I'm going to speak on rowdy numbers for a second. When you study negotiable instruments like personal checks and and business checks. You got to understand that the even the routing numbers, you have to understand how magnetic ink works, mm -hmm. the actual inches that each of the micro numbers are from the bottom and side of the documents and so forth. People just throw the routing numbers on stuff and do all kind of stuff. It's like that stuff is a science. Oh, yeah. That is a science in, in messing with negotiable instruments. These people are out doing stuff. They have absolutely no idea what they are doing. They're listening to people. I'm watching a video right now. I I want y'all to check this out. I want y'all to check this out real quick. <laughs> I want y'all to check this video out real quick. Where where is it at? Okay. Uh, right here. All right. This this video right here. I want y'all to watch this video. I want you to watch. This says arrested and charged using A for V. Now this is a uh, video. It appears to me to be a uh, jab at a man named Harvey Dent. I don't know if y'all know who Harvey Dent is. I, I don't really know who he is. I, I don't really even really know what he's about, but I just really find it very curious that people would jump out there and start following someone whose name is Harvey Dent when Harvey Dent is a character from Batman whose name is Two-Face. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when we're talking about the dumbing down of America, these are some examples of what we're talking about when people can come out and do things like this and mislead large numbers of people, get them to doing TDA accounts and things. Something that none of this stuff was originally intended for is something that y'all are, you know, they these people came out of the woodwork to start really making up some shit. And a lot of people jumped on. It was not even the first time. This is about the third time. It's about the third. It's just big now because it, it made YouTube this time. But it's not the first time that any of this stuff was being done or that there was a huge fervor uh, over a, a particular process. It's about, I mean, I didn't see 100 processes. It's about the third time I didn't see this stuff on the TDA account. It's not the first time. People using numbers off the back of their social security card to go and attempt to make purchases and pay bills and things. It's not the first time. It's not the first time, you know, it's not. So, you know, this gentleman right here, he 
he allegedly bought a bought a car and he's asking Harvey Dent for assistance. She said, for those saying there is no proof Marvin used acceptance for value, you go to 1248. So we go to 1248 of the video, all right? And if you sit here and watch it, I want y'all to watch this now. We're, you know, accepted by seller. So um, the check was cashed. All right, so they got, so right now she just put up a template of an accepted for value template. It's not filled out in any kind of way. Uh, and there's someone talking in the back. He, he won't reveal who he is or anything like that. He's just talking. That's how far I traced it. But, you know, nobody wants to give me an answer. I need help. So Harvey Dent, you know, this is, you know, way further than where you went, Harvey Dent. <laughs> Which, of course, was the point, Harvey, because we, um, I believe, not too long ago in one of your videos, um, called, so um, Harvey did it for you. But this gentleman. Okay, well, now they're trying to blame Harvey Dent for something that this gentleman, he went out. I don't even think Harvey Dent told him to do this. He went out and tried to buy a car. It was what he says. I don't really see any evidence of it, but let's watch it. To take this much further than you did, Harvey. Aren't you proud of yourself? Because you didn't get the wheel of I have a key, I have, you know, everything to it. Yeah, how about that? He has a key and he has the bill of sale. It's, now okay. he's begging for Harvey's help. Then the bill of sale and it's been signed by a seller. So, you know, I compiled all the video. All right, look at his bill of sale. He got buyer signature, Marvin G. Miller. They always have these, these names too that be very generic, very generic names. You go in like, like I got a whole list of uh, like trolls who come to my videos, Robert Jones, Marvin Mill. I mean, these people are not even intelligent enough to make a profile that is convincing, okay? That right there is insulting because it lets me know that they consider the American people so dumbed down that they don't even need to go the extra mile or effort to make profiles that are convincing. I mean, come on, y'all. Y'all got, look at his signature accepted by a seller. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what is this right here? What are they talking about? You know, it's like, where is the proof that acceptance for value was used? These are the type of videos that you're going to see that are floating around on the internet that a person who is not very, uh, that first of all, the people who they're absolutely new to this and don't know anything about anything or what's being talked about. I could really see how they could very easily be, you know, misled or tricked into something because I remember back when I first um, came across this information, you know, I didn't know anything and everything was just like Chinese to me. You know, you know, my friends were saying, um, hey, you know, it's 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 all a fiction. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, uh, you have an unlimited credit. Uh, you have an exemption account. He's saying all kinds of. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You know, they handed me paper to read. You know, uh, you know, they handed me all these stacks of stuff to read, and I just took that shit home, just put it on my dresser, didn't didn't read it at all. And so just sitting, in, I just ride with him every day and play chess. We, me, one of me and my friends, we used to play chess every day, and every while we were playing chess, he would be telling me about all this stuff and explaining things to me, and so. That was where I was getting my first education from, but I still did not know what they were talking about. I mean, I really can't understand how a new person, ever all this information can be very foggy to you. Because I remember when I was in the fog, I haven't forgotten when I was in the fog, I, I haven't forgotten when this information was first introduced to me. And that's why my teaching style is the way that it is, because I remember how I came out of the fog and I'm trying to, help other people come out of the fog. I remember, um, you know, a lot of people would tell me things, um, you know, you'd have a lot of myths, you'd have naysayers, you'd have people um, who are very fearful. Oh, you don't need to do that. The UCC is demonic. And, you know, I'm like, it's just, uh, you know, it's like, it's not what it is. You know, it's like, you know, you'd see all these people would say things. And one thing I had to learn how to do, and, and it was kind of easy for me, is because I'm a leader. I've never been a follower any of my, even when I was doing crime, I was the boss. I was the boss, you know, I've just never been a follower. 
Right. So I always think for myself. You know, I go and read it for myself and look at it for myself and make the decision for myself. I don't allow other people to influence me because, number one, the person who is attempting to influence you or tell you something that, oh, this is no good or that may not even be more intelligent than you. I hate to say that, but there are people come and tell me things and not to say you can't learn something from someone who you may deem is not as intelligent as you because you can learn from a child. As a matter of fact, and you know, in some initiations, that's a part of your initiation is that you have to understand that you can receive knowledge from everywhere. But um, what I'm talking about is in the sense that someone has read something and their comprehension level is not that good. And they're coming and trying to explain something to you and tell you something about it. And you go back and read it and say, this is not what this is saying at all. I can't tell you the number of times that has happened to me. The number of times, you know, if a person is coming to me and they're trying to explain something to me and they don't know how to capitalize a letter at the beginning of a sentence, they can't, they, they're not going to influence me in any kind of way. I mean, you don't sit you you haven't even learned how to capitalize a letter at the beginning of a sentence. And you're sitting here posturing yourself as an intellectual from me. And either you're not, either you don't know that you're supposed to do that or you're too lazy. My aunt works at a university. She's a, she was a dean at a university. She used to tell me the college professor would lay them out on the carpet if they sent an email and everything in that email was not grammatically correct. This is the kind of background I come from, you know, and I'm looking at people as I'm making assessments about people based off of this. And you should be doing the same thing. You should have a very, very high bar because let me tell you something. They can't get away from the truth. The truth doesn't need no protection. It don't need none of that because the truth wills out. That's a, that's a maximum. It's going to come to the surface anyway. It's going to come to the surface anyway. All right? The truth doesn't need any of that. Okay, so the thing about it is they can lie. They can say, y'all crazy. They can say, well, you know, I just posted a video of this lady without the driver's license. She gave the best explanation out of anyone I've ever listened to. It's on my YouTube page. Uh, this lady right here, uh, I mean, it is great. And uh, you can tell she's being, and you can listen to her. And tell, that's another thing about the truth. You can get to the point where you can listen to individuals. Where is this lady at? Right here. Where you can listen to people. They're at risk. This lady right here. And you can tell that they've been through something. Because she's not. she didn't paint a rosy picture. She talked about her car getting uh, uh, impounded, being arrested, taking oh, a yeah. court. You know, she told, you know, she let you know. That's just like with me. I, I can't I can't sit here and pretend like when I first started learning this, everything went well. Man, they drugged my ass. I oh, said, yeah. it, I oh, said yeah. it, you know, I say to jail like what like like 30 months fighting when yeah, I first man. learned this and everything. So no, I got drugged like a motherfucker. That's why yeah. I don't love people. That's why no naysayer can come to me because you haven't proven anything to yourself. You ain't been through nothing. You ain't been arrested. You ain't did. You ain't went. You if you're expecting this to be easy, you might get arrested. We were told that when we first got into this. If you can't handle being arrested, you don't need to be doing this. Exactly. We were told <laughs> that. A lot of these people think you're going to go out and do something and the possibility of arrest doesn't exist. They're going to test you with arrest. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be arrested for anything. That's why uh, the, the lawyer said they can form an indictment, information, or accusation. They can pull it out of thin air, and it can have absolutely no basis in law at all. And if they can get you to plea out, it is good. Mm -hmm. A guilty plea has no uh, has uh, there has no known or unknown defenses. Absolutely. absolutely. You got to learn the game. <laughs> And new people don't see to understand the games. These people be coming on, be trying to teach people stuff. I'm like, y'all people don't, you're not even qualified to be teaching 
people any of this because you don't know the game and you don't have any experience. Yeah. Yep. It's a game and you got to understand the game. And so I want to just put that out there. Like, that's why I listen to these videos. Why, why do y'all think I keep rolling? I can, and I keep on. And look, I got every time they come out with something, all they do is motivate me. Because, for instance, I'll give you an example. There's a video out I'm doing right now. This one right here, the secret maritime jurisdiction exposed. Okay. Uh, it took me, this has got, this is what, 36 minutes. It took me four days to do those 36 minutes, oh. working about 12 hours a day. All right. Now, I, I only got to the first part. The second part that goes into the cases and everything, I'm working on that now. Uh -huh. But for me to make this compelling, compelling and understandable, I got to take my time. It's going to probably take me two weeks to do the second part uh -huh. because I got to make it compelling. That's why they can come out and say things they say, because to really teach this, the effort and energy that is required to make it understandable for people and everything, it takes a lot. And not many people want to go out and do that. I'm doing it because I'm I'm committed so much to this. My name is out there so much. I it's like, okay, motherfucker, we'll prove it. And then I say, okay, I got I gotta, but for me to do it the way I want to do it, they see I can put together a video showing my, my computer screen and me just talking and flipping through shit. That's not compelling. That's not everybody does that. I'm yeah. different. I like to make compelling stuff that that in that um that immerses you in the information, music, graphics, all of that. Um, you know, because I know, okay, I, I gotta, I gotta, I'm a teacher. I understand edutainment. <laughs> I have to educate you and entertain you at the same time. Right. Because it, because we're in a time and age where people don't like to read. So That's I'm re so this document, I'm reading. Here it is, right here is the document. The secret maritime jurisdiction exposed. I put the uh I put the uh the document in the link. Okay. I'm re I just read this. I'm reading it, the whole document. I'm just reading it. Mm -hmm. I'm reading the whole document and I'm making a video out of it. Okay. That's how I'm doing things now. I, I'm going to do creditors and their bonds the same way, law, redemption, and court. I'm going to read the whole document and make a video out of it to make it compelling. Okay. All right, so that's what I'm doing now. So I want people to understand that's why I'm, I'm busy every day. I'm not sitting on my behind not doing anything. I'm busy every day. But as far as the barcode, let's get back because I don't want to digress. I, that, uh, I'll upload this. But that right there, okay, is how you put a barcode on something. Barcodes, you can add it. Barcodes are nice little additions uh, uh, to your uh, instruments or whatever it is that you're doing, even your documents. You know, you can put barcodes on documents and so forth. All right. So, because that's a way of, you know, that's a way of kind of like, you know, having it where, you know, authenticate, I, I wouldn't call it authenticating, but, you know, basically having some kind of way where your, you, our documents are unique and they are verifiable because these barcodes can be scanned. Right. They can be scanned. And so for you to get your camera phone, uh, download your barcode reader on your camera phone and scan that, you're going to see it's going to pop up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got two, two more quick things or excuse me, three more quick things. Uh, on the group, on the on the groups, on the uh, on the site, right? Nobody's answering any questions on any of the, any of the groups. I don't know what's going on. Everybody wants to stay on the chat, you know. And, and they love ahead. that chat, man. I mean, I they love, love that damn. Yeah, chat. You hear my thing beeping in the background. That's everybody on the chat yeah. right now. I'm gonna turn the I'm gonna turn the sound off on it, but I have to keep it on so I'll know while I'm sitting here working. I'm always checking because I, I've been sick. The reason somebody said nobody's answering any questions. Well, I was sick and I was in a tornado. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, 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 yeah, I was in a, I was in a tornado, so I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah, I've been gone and I'm gonna extend everything. But I, hey, I can't help. I put the videos up to prove it to y'all. We were in a we we took some a hit over here, and oh, yeah. electricity was out, internet was out, um, and right before that, I had the flu real bad. I mean, it was like. I don't know. It's like somebody sent some. I don't know. It was, it was just weird how everything just happened at one time. But oh, I'm yeah. a human. I'm a human being. Okay. 
I have to get up and clean up my house. I have to go pay bills. I have to go to the grocery store. I have to, sometimes I like to go to the mall and look around and see what other people are doing. Uh, I like to go out on dates um, and go to the movies and things like that. I have a life. I, I'm not sitting at this computer 24 hours a day. Okay. I just want people to understand that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sitting here 24 hours a day, you know? So I am a human being just like you are. You Sometimes I like to stop and just veg out and go watch TV and just go, you know, I sit up in my room and watch, you know, and, and veg out, and watch, you know, uh, like one of my shows is Billions right now. It's back on, you know? So, you know, yeah. I go, I watch that. I'm a human being. Okay. I got vices and things too, like everybody else. All right. Just want y'all to understand. But as far as this, I put up this thing right here in the, uh, what he's talking about is the, uh, hold on. He's talking about, and I understand exactly what you're saying. He's talking about, uh, oh, no, let me go, let me visit the site real quick. <laughs> all right, he's talking about the forums. All right, right here, I put up some forums, all right? where you can ask your questions and post some questions. If you want me to add a different forum, let me know as there's a topic that you want to add or something like that, just let me know and I'll put that topic up for you. But these forums, I'm putting up these forums so y'all can interact with each other, all right? And you know, you can post your questions and ask questions because here's the thing, here's something else that y'all need to understand. When you are doing all of these processes, you need the assistance of other people, of like-minded people. For instance, like if, you, if you're going to do your bond and so forth, you may need somebody to sign. You can't be by yourself. You need to be interacting with other individuals. OK, y'all are waiting and want me to answer everything. OK, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I just can't. I just I, just, I mean, I got look at this. man. I got 133 messages over here. I got to go through all these messages and there. I like, you know, I like, you know, I can't I can't do it. You know, I'm getting emails and, and I answer as many of them as I can. And I read through them, but you got to understand I'm adding like right now, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing right now. The videos, I, I'm doing videos for every section of the webinar, meaning when you go and take a, your, your quiz on that page is going to be a video for that particular section. It's going to be professionally produced. Nice. I, that's what I'm doing right now. And I got to add some more quizzes and things to this. All right. So I have a lot of work to do on the site it is by no means this site right now to me is about 30 percent complete it's about 30 percent complete okay i got about 70 percent more in, uh stuff that i uh that i'm adding and professionalism that i'm adding to it it doesn't have all the content i got templates and everything that i have to give to you um but me to go through all these templates and clean them up and make sure that everything all the spelling is correct and there aren't any mistakes in it or anything like that it takes a little time but i got things that i'm going to add on here for everyone it's going to be a lot um don't worry about the membership it's saying that it's going to expire um, I'll, I'll be taking care of that today. Don't worry about that. It won't, there won't be any expiration on your membership, but I'm going to make this a membership site. I'm going to start like having a monthly type fee, um, maybe $20 or something like that, $9.99, something, something like that, because I'm going to be continuously adding things and I'm going to have different levels. So if you pay for a membership, you get everything, every video, every webinar for the rest of the year, you don't have to pay per webinar or anything like that, get access to everything. It's like a, platinum membership and then i have a membership where if you just want templates or something like that you know it's going to be something like that so <laughs> it's a, it, there are a lot of things coming for the website that you should be looking on I, I mean i think i did a fantastic job on the website right now oh, what do y'all think absolutely do you have uh, anybody that's working with you as far as like making changes? i have nobody working with me i do need somebody to come and work with me i ain't gonna lie you know it's like somebody said um somebody said this to me it said man you know it's like you do not trust anyone. Oh. And it's like, and it's like, but you know what? Here's the thing, but there's the thing, because you know, you cannot grow a business and not trust anyone. That's true. It's Very impossible. True. It's impossible. You gotta have someone you can trust because you have to be able to work with other individuals because only one man can only take something so far. Oh, yeah. You know, you have to have the assistance of other individuals who can come in and I haven't gotten around to it. I got people who have offered to help me. I'm not going to say um, I haven't had anyone that hasn't offered to help me. I, I have people that offer to help me 
And I, I kind of sit down and, you know, really with this website stuff, you need to have some expertise in, in WordPress, you know? Right. And, I, and so that is one thing that is people want to help, but they want to help, but their knowledge is not, I, I'm, I'm not, you can't help me if I got to sit down and teach you something. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, you can't help me with that. All right. So I'm not going to sit down and teach you anything. I need people who have an expertise who can come in and already know uh, what they're doing and, you know, can you just get right in, they can plug right in and, you know, they understand, um, you know, WordPress, uh, you know, the different permissions on WordPress, how oh. plugins work, um, you know, how uh, CSS cascading st uh, style sheets work, um, how, uh, you know, maybe even a little bit of a, uh, 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 you know, uh, hypertext markup language or uh, whatever, you know, these are things that, you know, people need to know how to, how to do. And I taught myself all of this. I taught, I'm self-taught 100% self. -taught. I'm not saying that I'm an expert in everything by any means, by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm well, definitely, good. I'm, definitely, <laughs> I'm, definitely, I'm definitely functionally, functionally literate. <laughs> okay. In it. Okay. I'm functionally literate. But anyway, what's your next question? I'm sorry. Let me go okay. go back. All right. Because um, we got this right here. The reason Everybody, why I brought that Go ahead. I'm sorry. The reason why I brought that up is and asking if you had somebody working with you because I had some changes that were made in my Dropbox as well by somebody named Matt Mario. And uh, he changed the affidavit of truth. That was, that was just something else I was going to throw in with that. But um, I, I know you had mentioned something about uh, making a phone call in for the 98 number, the 45 number. I was wondering if at some point in time you can do a detailed instruction on that, how to call in, not call in, but go to the website and get that 45 number. Because I've already got my 98 number. I'm just needing that 45 number. Man, what well, a 45 number is like, you get that off the IRS website. You ain't got to call in and get that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll make, I'll make a video on it. I'll make a video on it. I, 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 I guess. You know, make a video. See, because here's the thing. In me applying for an IRS number, I got to make, I mean, I got to do a new, that means I got to go get a new number. Right. Okay. And, you know, it's like, oh, am I going to use this number or not? Probably not. But still, I got to go through, go through the motions and everything. So I'll figure it out. I, I'll figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm a creative person. I'll figure it out. Uh, now, but real simple man it's not difficult at all to get a four or five number that's pretty easy but go I ahead. Say, I say when I when I went into the website I got a uh, uh I want to say it's an eight 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 zero number or eight two number what okay it doesn't matter what the number is what the numbers represent uh Okay, it is uh all right. What these numbers mean is right here. All right, you see right here. I'm gonna put this link uh on the website. All the prefix means is what campus assigned it. When you say nine eight number, here's nine eight right here. Nine, Philadelphia is the only campus that issues foreign identifiers. You could have any of these uh, numbers at the beginning. Right now they're at nine eight, and I think they moved to nine nine. All right, okay. all right. So just nine eight is just a generic term. Four five is a generic term. When you say four five, that lets you know you got it off the internet. See, that's four five right here. Okay. All right, but you could have a four six, four seven, eight one, eight two. Okay. okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Don't let get caught up. Four or five is a generic term. Okay. That's just a generic term. Uh, all those first two digits represent is what campus issued the number. Okay. That's all. That answered my questions. Okay. <laughs> I, again, I appreciate you, brother. And uh, I'm glad to see you doing well. I talked to quite a few of your neighbors out there. And, and I hope that y'all's neighborhood come back together real soon. All right. Thank you, man. It uh, will. Uh, it, it looks like it's um, it's pulling itself out, you know, uh, back together. Uh, it's doing real good. And people clean up. Uh, everything got cleaned up. I know. But I'm hey, feeling I know contractors got there like roaches. <laughs> they, were, they were out here like roaches. Oh, I mean, they were, yeah. you know, I got about 50 cars myself. Uh, but they uh they have um on the back uh on the back on the back uh row 
Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. There's there's going to be some people, I guess, who didn't have insurance or whatever. And I'm not. I'm I'm feeling sorry for those people. But you know that back row and that that wooded area and that back street and everything is where everything got really got hit. Yeah. And um, uh, those people got right. displaced. They got displaced from their homes. And uh, one of my neighbors, he had to leave. He was just leaving yesterday. He had to leave his home. And uh, they got hit. They got hit bad. You know, I was on the kind of, I think I was on like the right on the outside of it because I took a lot of uh, debris damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, so that's what, you know, got me, the debris. And th that was scary in itself. If oh, you yeah. to, like <laughs> people, people say it was hail. I don't think it was hail. I think it was debris because it was like the because you all the shingles and everything is all over the neighborhood, uh, ripped off the shingles. Because you hear that stuff start hitting the house, and, brrr, and you're like, God damn, you know. And people oh, yeah. think, and people think that it's hail, but it was I, hell out there now. I seen a lot of it impact. Was hail. It, it was hail, but I didn't see hail hit out here. It was debris. I think it was debris mostly. Um, it could oh. have been, you know, I didn't because I didn't really look out the window, you know. You, you know, oh, after, a certain, <laughs> after a certain point, you don't look out the window. No. <laughs> and I'm really surprised y'all walked out in the street, you know, just to, to survey everything afterwards, you know. It was, it was, man, let me tell you, I don't think nobody really understood um, the magnitude of it. You know, I know I didn't. I didn't understand. I didn't. I walked out in the neighborhood. I did not understand the magnitude of what we just went through. Okay. And I, I didn't. I, I had no idea. I was like, wow. You know, I was in a tornado. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, golly. You know, but I was. I, you could tell. I was. My neighbor right behind me. House got towed up. Right behind me. I looked out the window and saw his fence disappear. Fence oh. just. It just erased it. It was just whoop. Side of the house, gold, everything. I'm, I, now I did look out the window and see that. But when I saw that, that's when I was like, oh, man. You know, and when you're looking at the wind, it looks different. It's like when you look out the window, the gray, and then and then it, the lightning is mm -hmm. different. The lightning is constant. Mm -hmm. That lightning is going off like it ain't stopping. It's a boom, 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 yeah. boom, 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 boom. It's just oh, yeah. like, like, like a machine gun. How the lightning is hitting and everything. It's just totally, it's just a totally different type of storm. If you've never been in a tornado, you know, and this was an F2. They said it was an F2, F1, probably F2, about 130 mile an hour winds. You know, an oh. F5 is about 300, 350 mile an hour wind. You know, just to let you know, a hurricane is about 200 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. A tornado F5 is 300 miles, 350 miles an hour. And, you know, when it comes to it, it levels everything. Just to give you an idea you know, I was in a tornado at wind speed about 130 miles an hour, and it could lift up cars. Oh, definitely. It did. Yeah. It lifted up some cars here. You know what I'm saying? It pulled up a Winnebago out the driveway and pulled some people's cars out of their uh, out of their garages. So, oh, I'm, hey, hey, the the when you come in your subdivision, there's a house that that lost a complete uh, second story. I, I'm like. <laughs> that lady, that lady was crying. I, when we walking through the neighborhood in the morning, she was um. The the beautiful thing is nobody got killed. Oh, absolutely. The absolutely. beautiful thing, nobody got killed. But yeah, I saw that lady and she was crying. She was, you know, you could see mm -hmm. all the way in our house. You know, it's like it's a couple of people lost the top of their house. You know, mm -hmm. but she got she got hit hard. I don't even understand how um. It just was weird how some people's how tops got ripped off. Some and then it seemed like some people were right in it. They they house didn't get everybody's house got damaged, but you know it didn't rip off the top of their roofs or anything like that. I found that interesting. But if you go in the back of the houses, it's mm -hmm. a wooded area. I don't know if you wouldn't check that out, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trees, man. It ripped those trees, man. Just ripped the tops off of trees like. It, I'm like, it, it, it looked like a crazy. thousand year old trees that just snap like you know uh, uh, toothpicks. Like toothpicks that ripped, <laughs> ripped them, up, ripped them up, ripped them, just ripped them. You can see the trail it went. You could just, you could actually see where the tornado went. It's like a trail it leaves oh, yeah. and everything. It's real, real, real. You know, it was, it, it was scary. I, I'll admit it was scary, but it definitely let me know the importance of having homeowners insurance. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they was out there full fledged too. Now. You know, some Dude. people I think some people take homeowners insurance for granted, but that will let you, that will impress upon your mind 
the importance of protecting your ass. <laughs> hey, I, and I, I give thanks to the American Red Cross too, because there was they, they was out there. The American the Red Cross came out. Um, uh, FEMA came out. Uh, yeah. uh, who else came? It was a couple of agencies came out. Whether the weather um, uh, storm chases from Channel Two. Um, mm. the weather bureau came out though. I talked to them. That's who let me know it was F2. They mm. were, you know, they were the ones that let me know the category that they put it at and, um, everything that was going on. I even know who he was, but yeah, it was a ton of people out here, man. It was a ton of people, man. It was a ton. Oh, it was a ton well, of people. I'm glad to see you all right again, brother. And like I said, it's always a blessing to talk to you. Um, you can go ahead and take the next call and I, and I'll be paying attention, brother. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right, let's go to Dolores Lee. Your mic is, let me see, open up Dolores Lee real quick. Your mic is open, Dolores. Thank you, Yusuf, for taking my call. Mm -hmm. um, I have actually asked my question, a little bit of my questions on the chat room, but I don't think you have time. So actually, I'm ready to file the uh, section two, you know, the first package. Right. And, and I, I'm not clear how to fill out the WA clearly or even form 56 which I realize when I go to the manual, the 178 pages okay. of manual, yeah, it, it covers the that's form. Why that's why I'm doing videos and everything to really just walk people through to show them how to really just, I'm doing like, and every video is going to be very short. It's going to be very short. It's not going to be long. Uh, the form WA, let me talk about that first. Mm. That, have you read the form w, WA? It's on my head. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the IRS is taking the form W8 out of circulation, actually. Um, but um, I got it. I downloaded it from Google. Yeah, okay. you can you can you can you can get it. They 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 really pushing the form WBEN. You know, uh, let me see if it see this WBEN. Yeah, the band is for beneficial owner. Right. They got B N B B B. You know, like you don't see the W eight anywhere on here anymore. But let me pull up the W eight for you. I mean, you know, you can tell these people are just like. Man. I was like, found out, find find that out and print it out. Yes, they're still available. W eight is still available. Yeah, it, where you get it at? Where where I haven't been able to find it. Where did you just get random, it? Well, just random search. It it come up and. <laughs> well, I, well, I, got it. I mean, I have it myself, but I'm trying to say is I can't find it on the IRS website. Or, oh, I didn't find it on IRS. I just Google it. Okay, you just Google it. Yeah, okay. Google it. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Um, I'm trying to see if I can pull up this W8 for you real quick. All right. I don't think you ever covered this uh, W-8 form before in the webinars. It's real, it's, re it's real simple. All right, you see right oh. here. Yes. John Doe, your address, city, state. All right, account number is your social security number. Account type, accounts payable. Your account number right here is going to be, this is your registered mail number. Mm -hmm. okay. The account type, posted registered deposit. Certification, interest payments, dividends, and brokers transactions are brought as exchanges. And then you're going to sign it and date it. That's it. So the registered number, I want to ask about that number. Is that the number going to be the same number on my master bond? That's exactly correct. Yes. But when I mail out the first package, it doesn't include the bond. So I have to have another. Can I mail yes, through certified you have, mail? You, have, you should have two registered mail numbers. Okay, let me let me say this about registered mail because I get a lot of questions about registered mail. Mm -hmm. And maybe I need to go into the post office because, you know, when I was getting my registered mail, we go in and get rolls of registered mail. I right? got it too. Uh, yeah, the, the, you got a roll too. But people yeah, will come at me and say, I can't get registered mail. I'm like, go to another post office. <laughs> Golly, you went to one post office, you couldn't get ready. Go to there's a million post offices. All right, keep going into every one you go into, just walk in, mm -hmm. ask for it. There will be somebody's gonna give you some. Trust me. Mm -hmm. All right, they I all have different attitudes and everything about registered mail. I got like two rolls of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you got you have one registered mail mailing mm -hmm. for your treasury package, there should be one for your bond package. All right. It's two different numbers. There are two different numbers. All right. So, but, but the first one doesn't include the bond. So I'm thinking, sh can I use a certified mail, which is faster and cheaper? That's, a good, That's a good question. Um, yeah. 
that's a very good question. Um, it, okay, let me put it like this. There isn't anything written in stone that says you can't. Mm. Because of the register, I'm gonna give you the rule, at least the rule that I follow. When I'm okay. dealing with negotiable instruments going through the mail, I always use registered, registered mail. Because right, that's what it's for, okay? Mm -hmm. Dealing anything else, you can use certified mail. So uh, there isn't any, I, I haven't been able to find. Now, you got to understand, the way that I'm teaching you, I did not make up this process. I'm teaching y'all how it was originally taught. Okay, if y'all want to make some innovations to it and things like that, you know, I can't I can't say that you shouldn't or you should not be able to do that. But if you want to use uh, certified mail, I haven't been able to find anything that says you cannot. But I stick to registered mail. Me personally, I suggest that you use it because there's only two of them. You only got two numbers. It, certified mail is cheaper. It is cheaper. Um, it can't, it, as far as for verification purposes, it does carry the same effect. So, yes. uh, you know, so I cannot, I cannot say that you cannot do that. Okay. I hope that answer is good enough for you, you know, because you're asking me, you're asking me to tell you something. You're asking me for my opinion. That's what you're uh, asking. Because you said you can't use certified mail on your bond. So I, I can't accept that. But if the first mailing, which includes the W-8, and it requires the account number to be a registered number. I just want to make sure that number, as long as it's the same as that on my bond. Let me tell you I this. Can... I'm going to give you the principle behind it. Yes. Whatever you choose to use, you have to use that from then on. Okay. In other words, when you send a treasury package to the treasury department, okay, that's you need to look at that as an account number. Okay, that is a ref. Maybe not account numbers. Maybe not the best thing to use. Reference number. Anytime that you correspond with them, you need to be able to refer to that number. Okay, that's why they call it an account. It is account number in essence because the Treasury Department is a bank. It's a bank. Okay, so you're giving them a bond. That's why I also use an. And also that bond is a negotiable instrument. The registered mail number operates in the same sense as a cusive number. Yes, yes. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tracking number. Yeah, okay. it's a tracking number. So whatever account or correspondence you send to them, you need to be able to refer to that. That's why you're sending it certified mail or registered mail, because you're going to refer to that correspondence in the future when you correspond with them again. Because so, you know, so if you send a treasury to package and you say, hey, you know, I sent this to you. Um, and uh, to tell you the truth, I'm gonna, let, let me tell you something. When I did my first treasury package, I did it certified mail. Because mm -hmm. the reason I did it certified mail is because I was in jail. And in jail, they didn't let us have registered mail. Oh. We did have certified mail. I had to do somebody else did my bond for me on the street, but I needed to get the paperwork in real quick. And I did it certified mail and Deposits. the Treasury Department sent everything back to me. I mean, they sent all my package back, but you know, I got my green card back and all of that. And, uh, you know, uh, but it took about, shoot, six weeks, I think, or something like that. Six, seven weeks. It wasn't it wasn't a short time. But when I sent my first package off, I was in jail. When I did it yeah. and I had to do, I had to make do with what I had access to. Mm -hmm. I knew I needed to use registered mail, but I didn't have registered mail. So I sent it certified mail. Why do you think you, you need registered mail for the first package? Why do you think, so? did you well, have a bond in the first package? Hey, you know what, to tell you the truth. No, you did. No, you don't. Uh, to tell you the uh. truth. Um, uh, uh, it may be one of those things where, um, because that's a very good question you just asked me. There was a uh, a, a story. I'm going to tell you a little story, and it's going to answer your question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was this old lady who used to uh, bake uh, uh, cornbread in a square pan. And when she she would cut off the edges of her dough. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the, uh, so the man asked well, the woman, why do you do that? And she said, I don't know. Uh, it's what my mother used to do. So we went to the mother and asked her, and she said, I don't know. That's what my mother used to do. And so we went to her and said, why you do that? She said, I don't know. That's what my mother went to do. And went to grandma and said, why did you do this? And she said, because my pan was too small. 
<laughs> so, so you, you, you are, I, I enjoy your All question. Because sometimes we just do things because <laughs> I, that somebody told me to do it. I just do it like that. And I may be guilty of that too. I don't want to see my thing is this. I'm trying to keep it pure the way it was taught to me without adding my own flavor into it and so forth. Mm -hmm. But that is a good question. And I just gave you a story about myself and everything. That's a very good question. I did it with a certified male, mm -hmm. um, even though I didn't want to. But when you ask questions like that, you have to, well, shit. I don't yeah. know. You know, it's like, <laughs> why are we why are we using registered mail? <laughs> <laughs> because it's expensive. The, the postmaster said, Yeah. Hey, What's yeah, the yeah, purpose? you gotta tell me. I, hey, when I used to discharge debt, hey, listen, when I got into this, I was discharging a lot of debt for a lot of people. And we were sending out registered mail, and that stuff was expensive. I had to go down, file a UCC. That was, and then they they try to pull something on us in here in Georgia. They started trying to uh, uh, at first a UCC filing was like nine, ten bucks. They try to go up to like two hundred dollars on us to try to stop us, right? So oh, this is a civil filing. I'm like, nah, you know, every, everything was getting very expensive, mm -hmm. and I had to talk to the clerk. I said, look, man, I said, what is it? It's not a civil action, and uh, he pulled out a lot of documents on me. He said, well, I'm sending all of this stuff that y'all are filing to the FBI. I said, fine, get the FBI because we were dealing with a. Uh, mortgages and i can show y'all an fbi package that people were sending to the fbi to investigate the banks so when he told me fbi i said hey, don't make me afraid okay call the fbi and we need to have these uh these banks investigated anyway so uh -huh. it was like but he showed me all these filings people were doing with uccs and uh -huh. um but back then we were dealing primarily with mortgages this was this was this was all around mortgages discharging debt on mortgages and houses is real big in about 2010, dealing with the houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were trying to scare us. And, you know, I just wasn't a person that was easily afraid. You talk, because I'd been to the feds, I right? And I'd been in courts. So mm -hmm. when they tell me we're going to get the feds or something, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about that. You're a feds. I don't care. Bring them. Let's talk <laughs> about this. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the ones doing fraud. Why well, am I going to yeah. be afraid? You know yeah. what I'm saying? You got to make me afraid. And you the one that's doing fraud. OK, you can't make me afraid. I said, look, this is no sovereign citizen ideology. Everything mm. that I'm telling you, I learned from the law library. I don't deal with sovereign citizen ideology. Yeah. Uh, he, he named sovereign citizens, Moorish nationals. Mm. And he said independent. He was like, he said, there's three groups we're investigating. I said I, don't, yeah. I said, I don't fit into any of those groups. I said, I go to the law library. OK, and he uh -huh. said, well, so he said, so this is what he told me next. He said, um, well, he said, those people sign contracts. They owe that money. I said, well, let me tell you something about a contract. A contract needs offer, acceptance, and consideration. And a lot of these contracts don't have all three of those elements. When I said that, he told me to get out. He said, get, up, get out of my office. Go file your paperwork and get out of my office. I mean, he told me to get out. Yeah, but he let me file my paperwork because you know they're trying to charge us two hundred dollars. And uh, yeah. as a matter of fact, when I um when I when I when 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 at the clerk's desk, um they tried to charge us two hundred dollars. I said, let me speak to the clerk because all those other clerks they're just assistant clerks. There's only one clerk, mm. okay, mm -hmm. like just one sheriff, and there's everybody else is a deputy sheriff. Okay, they got the same thing. These people are deputizing uh -huh. these other people. So they're just deputies. All those other clerks, they're just assistant clerks. So mm -hmm. I said, let me speak to the clerk. So he said, okay. So he brought me to the back. And the clerk, he's a he's a white man. And he's talking to a group of other white men. It sound, they look very like very important people, too. So mm -hmm. the clerk, he has his back turned to me. So the clerk walks me up to him and taps him on the shoulder mm -hmm. and said, uh, this is Joseph Jones. He'd like to talk to you. When, he, when, when she said my name, he looked at me and said, you Joseph Jones? I said, yeah. He said, he stopped everything. He stopped talking. He said, look, I need to talk to you. Come in my office. And so he said, he, so he brought, brought me in the office. He said, look, I hear a lot of people's name in this county. He said, but I don't hear nobody's name as much as I hear your name. I said, yeah. I said, it's probably because I'm not afraid of y'all. He said, you know, I said, that's what I told him. I said, yeah, probably because I ain't afraid of y'all. I said, probably why you're my name and everything because I'm not because I was I was very known people don't understand this in 2010 mm. 2011 I was very very known here in Georgia <laughs> I was on the news I was going in courts 
I was doing a lot of stuff. A lot of people just came in to know me off of blog talk and on YouTube. But, but before social media, I was in this stuff knee deep doing all of these things that I'm, I'm teaching y'all now and everything. A lot of stuff that I'm teaching you, I was doing like on a regular basis every week I was doing it. Got arrested. I didn't, didn't been through the whole thing, you know, and uh, because I understood what I was going through and what I was doing. And if you really want to know the truth, I was upset because when I got arrested, I thought my arrest caused my divorce and lost access to my children. That was my motivation. I was mad. I was out for revenge. I was I was out for revenge. I was I was out for revenge and I told a judge this. I told a federal judge. I said the only way y'all going to make me stop. I told a judge this. I said the only way you're going to make me stop is you're going to take me in the back and shoot me in the head. Hmm. Now, a lot of y'all ain't reached that level. Something hasn't happened to you in your life. That happened to me. If you want to know my motive, a lot of people think I'm motivated. I'm not motivated by money. Money don't motivate me. I just yeah. need money to survive. That's not my motivation. Uh-huh. I got something burning inside of me. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have that, you don't need to be messing with this. Yeah, that's the only thing that's gonna carry you through. I got something burning inside of me. Mm-hmm. Injustice, right? Exactly. And this is where I'm gonna get them. The way I'm gonna get them is I'm gonna tell everybody. Yes. I'm gonna educate them. I'm gonna create an army and take that bullshit down. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> you gotta work as a team. That's why I'm doing all of this. That's why I'm making websites. That's why I come on, spend all this time making videos. Because of my That's, family. Yes, yes. Really appreciate your work. It's all for, for good. So even though you've gone through so many trials and tribulations, it's, it's all good. We're all benefiting from it. And so, I made mistakes. Don't, hey, listen, don't, st- don't even think for a second. I didn't, yeah. fuck, I didn't fuck up along the way. I fucked up a lot. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I never let mistakes stop me because I understood one thing. You have to make mistakes to mistake. learn. Mistake, like when you learn how to walk, you fall. Yes. Okay? That's the yeah. process of learning how to walk. Mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Not even are you going to court. If somebody mm-hmm. went into court, I can't tell you the number of times I went into court. <laughs> and after the proceeding was over, I'm sitting somewhere thinking, damn, I forgot to say X, Y, and Z. I should have did, <laughs> I should have said this. I didn't say it. Damn, why did I say it like that? You know, you know how many times I did that? I did the same thing. That is why I'm a good teacher. Because I'm not going to sit up here and posture myself as infallible, as a person who don't make mistakes and a know-it-all. I'm going to give you the real damn deal. Mm. Okay? That's what it is. All right, go ahead with your next question. Well, right, yeah. Let's answer the question on the W-8. The W-8... The account no, uh, just want I just want to make sure the right, right, right. Okay. Account, is, account number is the same as the uh, master bond num- number. Account number is private. Which is, a, you which can is make a Q-SIP it. for the bond, right? Basically, L- right? Listen, let me say this: you don't even yeah. have to make the account number a registered mail number or a certified mail number. You can make it be whatever you want it to be. Oh, I thought it has to be aligning with the bond, master bond number or whatever. It doesn't have to be. Uh, okay, let me ask you. Uh, uh, well, it, it has no, to no. that account number has to be on your bond. Look at a check. What's on a check? What's well, that check? I, I understand the bond issue. I, I totally understand how the... Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. Check. What's on a check? Okay, you have a, an account number. A routing number. A yeah. routing number and a check and number. A, okay. A check number. On a check. All right. That's in the public side. The private mm-hmm. now. Why do you have all three of those things on a check? Oh. Okay. All right. 
The check number is a unique identifier for the instrument. The routing number tells what institution is going to clear the check. All right. And mm -hmm. then the account number says what account it should be directed to. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you need all three of those elements in your process. Only you can create them yourself. Obviously, an instrument needs a check number or some sort of instrument or item number on the instrument. OK, mm -hmm. you need some sort of way to route the instrument. OK, I that's what the registered mail and certified mail is all about, because mm -hmm. it identifies who is the holder of the bond. I that's the main reason mm -hmm. why you're using the uh, uh, the uh, registered mail oh, or yes. mail numbers, because it's a routing number. It's letting it's letting every it's verifying it's sir, it's verification of who is the holder of the instrument. It's it's undeniable proof. OK, who has it? He is the holder of it. I got proof. You got it. Here it is right here. And the reason that a registered mail number is so much more powerful than a certified mail number is because they register. They uh, certify each of the individual stops that the uh, correspondence is going through. Registered mail is more powerful than certified. Oh, mail. no, actually, I verified that. OK, I have to clarify this. I asked the postmaster yesterday. The difference about the stops, okay, the scanning. He said actually, register mail only uh, from delivery out to and, and recipient to ends only. But uh, in fact, the certified mail has to show, scan every stop. So actually, certified mail is even better. I I think you got that backwards. I'll no, because the most of the general was there. Yeah, but that's the lady was telling me. I asked the same question, and my it told me to reverse that. Oh. I registered mail that I I'm, I asked oh. the same question. I, I gotta go I, online. You know, check. Who wouldn't ask that question? And I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right because mm. I'm I, I'm getting my information obviously from the post office. Mm. I went up to the post office and I asked the lady, "What is the difference between certified mail and registered mail?" Mm. Okay, and you can also get this registered mail uh, booklet to register all your stuff in. You know, you need to ask them for that, too. I'll post a picture of it. I think I got mine around here somewhere. I'll post a picture of it and show you what that looks like, where you record all of your registered mail uh, and certified mail in. But I asked her the difference between the two. When you do mm -hmm. registered mail, they're going to ask you the value of it. They're not yeah. going to do all that with it. They're going to ask you, do you want insurance? You know, you're going to go through a whole bunch of stuff with registered mail that you're not going to go through with certified mail. So, uh, so I asked her, I said, what is the difference? And she was like, you know, she told me each of the individual styles. That's what was, she, I got told the same thing that you were told, but I was told that that is for registered mail, not certified mail. All right. That's what mm. I was told. Now, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying well, that's for what sure. I was told. We're yeah, both, in, we're both being told something we were told. It comes with insurance, but not for certified mail. That I understand. But the tracking, right. the the in between the registered mail is too secure because it's in box and locked boxes. It's not scanned because it's secure from end to end, and the middle part they don't show you anywhere. But the certified mail, it comes with uh, 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 well, little you know, tracking. I, well, let me let me ask you this, and I'm just going to use my common sense. If I'm sending a million dollar uh, let's say I'm sending a two hundred thousand dollar check through registered mail. Wouldn't it make more to, sense? Wouldn't it make more sense for that to be more secure than certified mail? But you pay extra for the extra insurance coverage. The right. basic is uh, thirty thirty thousand or something. It's on, on the website. It says how right. much is covered on the basic. Right. And you can pay right. more. Yeah. Right. Right. You just ensure. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, yeah. you can, I, like I said, I'm not gonna argue about it. Like I said, I'm, we're both going off what we were told. Uh, you know, I was told. I was told the exact same thing you were told, but I was told, and I could be wrong. I'll go up there and ask again because that was a while back when I did that. It was probably, I don't know. I think I asked that question about two or three years ago. You know, something <laughs> like that. It was. It was a while. It was a while back, and I could be wrong. My memory could be foggy, so I could be. I could be wrong about it, but I'll go and ask again. And see what they did, but I, but anybody at some point is going to go in there and ask them what is the difference between certified and registered mail. And you can go into cracking the code, and let me show y'all something real quick. Let me show you something out of cracking the code, the third edition. Um, which y'all all know is my favorite book, I, and I just think that cracking the code third of edition was was great. Uh, but uh, so the uh, the routing number 
let me see, the routing number, it, uh, the QCIP number, which is the registered mail or the certified mail number. Right. What, what is a what purpose does a routing number serve in the public? What purpose does it serve? Um, the routing number is it fixed for all instruments? I'm, I'm okay. wondering. All, all banks have their own. If you go into your bank, you had like Bank of America. Bank of America has a unique routing number. All right. It's yes. going to let them know that that check needs to be routed to that particular institution. All right. So you, I, you got your own routing number. It's private. Okay. It's public and private. Okay. There's a public and there's a private. There's on the public side, there is, you're doing the same thing, only you're just creating your own. So, uh, okay. Let me clarify with you. I say on check. The check you said that okay, the route is a routing number. My uh, UCC contract trust number. No, the routing number is your registered mail number. Oh, the, that means the routing. Uh, the the the. They are certified. The routing, uh, listen, listen you got. It change every time. <laughs> a routing number tracks it. It's a tracking number. Okay, how are you going to track an instrument with your exemption number? Okay, when you go to the post office, you can track. Well, how can you track an instrument? If I'm gonna put something in the mail, how am I gonna track it? Yeah, it's a tracking number. Okay, how much? No, tell me how am I track it? With what? A registered or Registered mail. Number? Yes, yes. Okay, so that is your routing number. Okay, because it identifies who, where it went. Okay, if I put something in the mail to the uh, Treasury Department a registered mail number. Okay, I can go to USPS website and it will show that the Treasury Department, the time they got it, okay, <laughs> who's, uh, th th they signed for it, everything, right? Mm. Now, isn't that prima facie evidence that the Secretary of Treasury is in possession of that instrument? It serves as uh, a, a di identifying number on the document, the, the instrument. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, 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 you didn't ask the question, yes or no. <laughs> does, that, does that provide proof that the Secretary of Treasury has your correspondence in his possession? Y yes, yes. Okay. All right. So now we know he has it. If you send a bond to him, he has it. That I don't care what he does with it after he gets it. I don't mm -hmm. care if he put got got some secret back office thing where they start putting stamps on it and trade it all over the universe and take it to other planets and buy up property on Mars. I don't care. <laughs> all I know is I sent it to you with instruction. <laughs> all right? And every yeah. time I send correspondence, that is where I'm routing it to to you because you have it in your position. You're the holder of it. I am the holder in due course. And the due course, because it's a negotiable instrument, that means negotiate. it's going to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. But in the course of that negotiation and the due course of that, it's going to eventually end up back with who? Me. Me. All right, that's why what they used to do with your checks. They used to do what with your checks? Give them what? Return it to you. Back to you, because yeah. you're the holder in due course. It comes back to me. Okay, mm -hmm. when you right now, anybody out there do real estate construction, all right, because they still give back the promissory notes. Uh, at least my, my friend, he does construction, he does uh, real estate development. He tells me, well, they still give us our promissory notes back, the bank does. Okay, he and he got him. He showed him to me. Mm. Keep records of everything. All right, they still can get theirs back. Okay, when you do your house, you're supposed to get that back. You gave oh. them an instrument that's floating around out there. That's why they give you the excuse. Oh, we destroy them. They <laughs> tell you they destroy them. What you destroy them? No, you're supposed to get that back. But it's now illegal. They, yeah. That now they don't give you your instrument back. They send you what? They'll send you checks back. They give you what? Copy of it. Copy. Uh, yeah. You don't know what they did with it. Not even a copy. We we deposit a mobile, you know, through mobile deposit. You're supposed to get it back. Okay, that's my thing. All right, uh, but they have it in you. So now you made a deposit. It's called a deposit because 
They are a financial institution. Mm -hmm. You gave them a negotiable instrument. No different than when you go up to Bank of America with a $20 Federal Reserve note in your pocket. What is that $20 Federal Reserve note that is in your pocket? What is it? Look at it. Pull it out. It's a what? What is it? Legal, legal tender. It's a promissory note. Promissory, promissory note. It is a negotiable yeah. instrument. It has two signatures on it, doesn't it? Two it signatures? Has, oh. Yes, it has two signatures on it. It has oh. it has a unique identifier on it, doesn't it? Doesn't have a serial yeah. number? Yeah, yeah. None of the other instruments have that same serial number, do they? No. Okay, and you're going to take it up to the bank and give it to them. They're going to make it a pot. What? Tell me, what is the difference between your Federal Reserve note uh, and your uh, negotiable instrument? What's the difference? No difference. No difference whatsoever. No, I'm clear about the identifying that that instrument. That part I understand. But the, the others that confuse me is uh, on the W-8 form, you need an uh, uh, account. Okay, yeah, you uh, need an number. account. Let me, let me see and you want to use uh, the, re the reason the registered mail number is used as an account because it is a tracking number, okay? It serves as certified prima facie evidence of who is the holder of that bond because you got to understand, this ain't a process where you're using debit cards and things like that, all right? You, we, you don't have that, okay? All right? You don't have anything. The only proof that you made a deposit and that somebody with a financial institution is your registered mail number. That's it. That's the only proof that you got. Okay. So you're re that is a reference number. That is a routing number. That is telling that is telling where it is identified at because when you send a correspondence to the Treasury Department, you're going to put that registered mail number on there to remind them that remember that bond that I sent that has this registered mail number on it. Remember, here's the registered mail number. We can go to the United States Post Office and look at it and see that you got it. So don't try to act like you ain't got it, motherfucker. I know you got it. <laughs> uh huh. All right, you got it. Okay, so <laughs> here it is. Remember what was written on it? Go back and read it. Read it again. What did it say? I was going to be sending some stuff for you for set off. Well, here it is. I'm sending it to you. And here's the reference number for it. Okay. Don't make it complex. Do not make this complex. All right. Because just by reading the manual, it does. it's not very clear to me. You know, the I'm manual gonna, section I'm gonna two. Rewrite, I'm going to rewrite the manual and everything because it's not very clear. I'm the section two is unclear and it missed out form 56. I understand <laughs> that I need to attach form 56 fiduciary right there in the first yeah, packet. Some people use it, some people don't. Oh. I, you know, you know, I, I, I haven't really seen too many times where it seems that effective in my personal experience. But. A form 56 is utilized for the purposes that they've been designated for in these processes. They are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm not going to tell you don't use them or whatever. You can use form 56. But, uh, you know, but, you know, I'll I'll uh, I'll put a video out on filling that out as well on the form. This is about negotiable instruments right now, though. Let's let's kind of just stick to negotiable instruments. All right. Uh, okay. Let me I see got another video on filling all that stuff out, but this is about negotiable instruments. The routing number. Okay. And matter of fact, let me let me show you something real quick. Registered treasury account. Let me show you something. This is cracking the code three. Let's see for How do I make this uh treasury account reference? And. Uh, So up to this point, my understanding is that package one, I can actually use a certified mail because the bond number on the bond is not mentioned in the first package yet. It's a separate mailing, so it's, it's a separate not, tracking yeah. number. Well, it's it's going to be on your UCC one. Yes, it will be. It's on your UCC one. You mean the 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 bond? The red, yes, on your, yes, on your UCC. Yes, one. yes, it's on my UCC one. Okay, so it is in your first package. Uh, it's only in my UCC one. Uh, 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 certified that, that copy. UCC one is a notice. So yes. It's a no. Uh, yes, it's just a certified. Is uh, do I need to attach a certified copy back from the UCC division? 
I mean, you can state. if you want to. I mean, you uh, oh. anytime you do anything certified, because what it is, here's the thing. You are certifying to the Treasury Department that you are in. Uh, the, here's the important thing that you have to have them know, that you have that birth certificate in your possession. I, that's important for them to know. Mm. I, and usually, you know, having uh, having a copy of it is well, they got a thing called full proof and half proof. OK, mm -hmm. using Admiralty. These are the terms they use. Half proof, obviously, is like one witness or, mm -hmm. you know, or having a copy of something. Then you got <laughs> full proof. OK, full proof would be when you have authenticated copies or certified copies of documents and you have two witnesses, you come into court with two witnesses, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I, it's called, today they use a word called slight evidence. That's the mm -hmm. modern term that they use. I'm using, when I say foolproof and half proof, those are old school admiralty terms. Mm -hmm. they use something like called slight evidence. So mm -hmm. what is it that is gonna be compelling in your evidence? Obviously, when you have certified and authenticated documents that provides um, sufficient evidence that what you're doing is legitimate. All right. So you need to have some proof that you mm -hmm. have the birth certificate in your possession, in your now, possession, in my possession. I'm wondering because and you know what? And they're not. And, and here's what we used to do. I'm going to tell you what we used to do. We used to use mm -hmm. notaries. We would make a copy of the birth certificate and then get the notary to make a certified copy of it. Now, the notary is not supposed to do that with a document that is issued from something like Vital Statistics, but I did it anyway. Oh. Yeah, I did it anyway. I didn't care. I, and it worked. I mean, it went through. I, because, well, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. When you get the notary. Uh -huh. And see, the difference between me and all of y'all is this. I go and make my own notaries. You know, I was like a girlfriend or something. I say, hey, I'm going to take you up here and make you a notary. Okay. <laughs> I make a notary. Y'all be saying, well, where did I find a notary? Listen, I always have notaries around me. I, I've never had a problem finding a notary. You know why? Because I, I, I made a, I, told, I said this one before I got out of jail. When I was in jail, it was so hard to get a notary. And then the officers, mm -hmm. they would notarize stuff, but they would only, mm -hmm. they wouldn't do a, uh, they wouldn't do an administrative process for you. Our officer yeah. in jail is not going to do that, but they would notarize affidavits and things like that for you. So I've made a promise after going through all of that. I said, man, when I get out of here, mm. every girl I'm dating mm. is going to be a notary. That's going to be a requirement. <laughs> and I did, that. I did that for like the first three years. I'd be like, okay, hey, baby, you know, I say, hey, you know, I know we've been dating for a while. Uh, you want to make some extra money? Yeah, I said, okay, I'm going to take you up here and make you a notary because it was cheap. I did that with everybody. Oh. I, I, it was oh. cheap. California is expensive. California is like almost $500. And they take you through a whole, because California, they're trying to suppress the notaries in California. They're trying to suppress them out there. But uh, <laughs> you can do a certified copy. Okay. All right. So what it is, see, like all uh, certified attested photocopies, American Society of Notaries. So right here, you can see notaries are frequently asked to make a certified or attested copy of original document. Not all states, however, authorize notaries to perform this act. Let me blow this up for you so I can see it. So do you mean your girlfriends have a license to act as a notary public or not? Yeah, I thought notaries. I would get them a license. Yeah, I would get them. Oh, I, take, uh, get them I, I take them and pay them. I, I, I go up there, pay the fee. If oh. they had to take a test, I'd pay for that. Uh -huh. And yeah, I'd get them to be a notary. And, you know, I had one chick I was dating. She was making like $1,000 a week uh, just being a notary because, you know, I knew so many people were doing this and they knew notaries. And I trained her how to do an administrative process and everybody and their mama was calling her. And she had all, <laughs> she had all her prices set, you know, you know, because if she had to drive out to meet you, there was traveling expenses. So she had a price set for that. Uh -huh. um, she had all her prices set up. And, um, She's making about $1,000 a week doing that, you know, right. just helping people, uh, just charging people to notarize documents and do administrative processes for people. But notaries mm -hmm. are frequently asked to make a certified or attested copy of an original document. Not all states, have authorized notaries to perform this. Act. And let me say one th other thing, interject. People mm -hmm. in jail, they need notaries so bad, mm -hmm. the notaries charging them $500 and they was paying it. Mm -hmm. They was paying it. Because you can't yeah. get a notary in jail. So guys in jail with money, they need to do yeah. an administrative process. They find a notary on the outside that'll help them. They'll pay, they was paying it, which I think they was, you know, 
I think they over, well, I think they overcharge the brothers. You know, you're in jail and stuff like that. But you know, you're in a situation where you know they're asking, they're in jail. They don't, they don't, you don't have access to anything. You know, it's like when you're in jail, it's very, very difficult to they're do. They're the only witness, yeah. Yeah, to do to any of these processes because of yeah. what you need, the you know the uh, resources that you need. Mm -hmm. But it says, now right here it says about the duty. Let me read this to you. The act of copy certification attestation is completely different from notarial acts involving a signed document. You do not administer an oath or take an acknowledgement from anyone. Instead, you make you, uh, you make or witness the making of a photocopy of a document, or you compare a photocopy against the original document, and then certify or attest, affirm to be correct that the photocopy is a true copy of the original. Only certain states that authorize copy certification attestation allow the comparison method. There are California power of attorneys only, Colorado, Idaho, Maine, uh, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Washington, West Virginia, uh, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. For clarity, um, uh, ASN avoids use of the term certified copy, except in states whose statutes actually refer to the act in this manner. We more frequently use this variation of the term attest, i.e. copy attestation or attested copy. Please note that when a notary makes an attested copy of a document, he or she is not guaranteeing the authenticity of the original document, mm -hmm. its contents or its effects. The notary is simply stating that the document photocopy is a true and complete copy of the original document that was presented. The notary certification is made in a notarial certificate worded expressly for this purpose. And then they got some of the verbiage and they'll tell you about vital records, no public record or vital record. The document must not be a public record or a vital record. A public record is any document that is recorded in a county clerk's office or held by some government agency and is open to the public for inspection. Vital records are those that do, uh, that document citizens' life events within a particular state or county, such as a birth certificates, death certificates, and marriages and divorce records. Every jurisdiction, every state and country in the world keeps these type of records. If you are asked to make a copy of a vital record, you must decline. Your customer should request a certified copy from the original official custodian of that record, such as the Register of Vital Records or the county clerk recorder. If a customer asks you to certify a test a photocopy of a document that is not yet recorded, but will be recorded, you should decline the request. The document should first be recorded and the person may then request a certified copy from the office that holds the original recorded documents. Okay. Now, I did that to let you know, so you'll know, but I didn't care about none of this because I'm doing it on the private side and I sent it in to the treasury department and who's going to tell? They're not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. I had anything like that. So I did it. Okay. I did it like that. I had my notary mm -hmm. do it, you know, and um, I'm going to show you the verbiage. You have, to, you should go to your state, like here in Georgia. Yusuf, for the first package, because some documents are repeatedly sent on the second time to, can I send the first time only copies of those certified notarized yeah, yeah, you can send uh, copies. Yeah, copies. It's in copies. first time copies. Oh, yeah, it's okay. in copies. I and right here you'll see like this Georgia, your state probably has an acknowledgement, and you should use this for all your notary uh, notaries. If you're using your state notaries, find out what their um, certificates look like. Okay, acknowledgement for individual act in in its own right, acknowledgement mm -hmm. for a corporation, uh, acknowledgement for individual act, and I think they got copy certification right mm -hmm. here. So this is what I use in my state, okay? I don't use anything out there. There's my copy certification right here. So now you can use this for all your documents that you're making copies of, okay? You can have the notary certify copies of all your documents, okay? Notaries certify copies is my point. Uh, now, as far as with the birth certificate, they're not supposed to do that, but you know, I... I find ways of doing things. Oh, they all did for me. Well, yeah, I have, two I yeah they, they have no problem doing for my uh, yeah, a lot of them don't know. government or, documents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them don't know. A lot of them don't care. But you know, <laughs> you put this on your birth certificate. What you do is you copy this. You take mm -hmm. a. I scan a copy of my birth certificate, and then I. Uh, man, let me show you what I do. <clears throat> what I do is.
Uh, let's see. Trying to find a good copy of a birth certificate. Uh, yeah, let me use this one right here. I do a yeah downloads. All right, and use if you don't really recommend us necessary to have the birth certificate authenticated. Do you? No, I mean well, there's nothing wrong with getting authenticated. Uh, Nothing wrong at all. Hell yeah. Get it authenticated. I, was there, I mean, y'all heard me say that a thousand times. I have nothing. I have no problem with birth, with getting the birth certificate authenticated. What I problem with was that Minnesota Rule 220 shit. And everybody was uh, talking about why you're doing it. So you come the registered owner. I'm like, nah, nah. Yeah. All right, so right here, I would do it like this. You know, I would, you know, I'd, I'd make a copy of my birth certificate or scan it. In, and then um, I put this on here like this. And that would be my copy certification for my notary. Oh. And they'd notary, have a notary notarized and everything. That's how I would do it. Oh, you need a barcode, huh? <coughs> what? Just a recorder county clerk. Oh, you Here's the copy certification right here. This is the copy certification. All right, you scan a copy of your birth certificate and then you add mm -mm 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 -mm. this on here like that. All right, <laughs> then I'd print it out and then have the notary, you know, notary. Have it ready, everything ready for him to just seal and sign. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right, he's yeah. going to do a comparison of it. He's going to make sure that it is a actual and true and complete copy of it. And then he'll uh -huh. put his his stamp on there. That's how I did it. And you can do this with all your documents that you need certified copies of. You need a certified copy of it. You know, you put that verbiage on there and, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, it's for certified copies, you know. County clerk. Actually, we can take it to the court clerk to, yeah, to you make stamp it. Anybody who is can do that because the clerk can do it, notaries can do it, hell, judges can do it. You know, yeah. anyone who's been authorized uh, to do that can do it. It's not just notaries. So yeah, I think clerks uh, also have that power as well. Mm -hmm. All right, let me. Hey, I gotta go on. I gotta. Add, I gotta yeah, ask. You gotta go on. All okay. Right. Thanks. 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 All right, you're welcome. All right, let me get back. Let's get to Martin Martinez. Your mic is open. <clears throat> Why is it a bad idea to issue or deposit a bond for more than a hundred million? I didn't say it was a bad idea. Okay, okay. I just said uh, that a hundred million dollars is seems to be a hundred billion. A hundred million dollars is what they monetize on uh, the on, on the markets. Uh, you need at least a hundred million dollars to get on a trading platform. And what people are saying is that they are. Uh, that the government is monetizing these birth. You know, I got some inside people that told me this, that the reason that they, they don't send you your bonds back is because they're put together properly and they are using them and they are monetizing them and putting them on trading platforms, which makes sense to me. All right. And you need a bond needs to be at least a hundred million dollars to be put on a trading platform. You can go on, on Google and, and verify this for yourself. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I have nothing in my possession that says it has to be uh, just a hundred million dollars. Nothing. I, I, I'm reasoning this out from inside information that was told to me. It could be two billion dollars. It could be a billion or whatever. All right. I have nothing in my possession that could controvert anyone who does anything at any other amount. Okay. What would you say the recommended amount of characters um, for the future proceeds numbers should be? Like, how many numbers should we have, or what's the future proceeds numbers? Ain't nothing but checks, okay? And mm -hmm. so, how many checks are you looking to write, okay? In other words, when you go to the bank and you get your bank checks, they give you a box of checks, right? They get you get one box of checks and two box of checks. How many checks you think you're gonna be writing? Well, I guess my question is how many characters should, you know, like, okay, so, um, you know, so let's just say that I, want. it could be anything you want, any type of convention that you want. You can put it together yourself. I, I, some people, they will use their initials. They'll say JJ, one, two, three, four, or something like that. You know, they'll use that convention. 
Uh, I've had people come along. They change that up. They say, hey, don't do that. That's not how real check numbers look. Um, but the point is, whatever convention that you use, you have to stick with it. You can use whatever you want to use. You're private. No one can tell you what to do. These are item numbers is what they are called. Uh, you are you have this is a unique identifier for this particular instrument. You can use any convention that you want to use. Wonderful. How can uh how can one get um the fonts uh you know like um like there's a real nice font that you had it's the dollar bill font that you had on your Photoshop and you made that bond look real nice with that font. Right. And, right. And uh, okay. I'll I'll tell you what I have I will put. My all my font collection in the Dropbox. I got a whole bunch. I'll put the font collection in the Dropbox. I, I don't even want to go through all that showing you where to download it. I have it downloaded. I will give y'all all of them. I have no problem giving y'all my fonts and everything. Y'all can have. I got hundreds. So you know, it, and it's called a dollar bill font. So it'll be easy for you to do. You just click on it, click install, go right on your computer. So you know, right. I'll I'll make that available to you. I'll put that. That's a good thing, though. I didn't think about that, but yeah, I should put the fonts in Dropbox. I'll put it. It, it, it looked real nice, man. You made it look real nice, and and you know, I, with the uh, what what with the software came with, it was just real limited. It, it yeah, none you, of the other none gotta, of the other fonts look good on the on the on the bond like that. If you're gonna do negotiable instruments or anything like that, you should be in the habit of of collecting fonts. You should be in the habit of collecting. I collect fonts. Fonts are very extremely important. I have the fonts. I probably shouldn't say this, but I have the fonts that they have for most of the driver's license uh, in the state and everything. I mean, that's how deep I went with fonts and everything. A lot of the stuff that because a lot of those fonts that are used by the government and public, they are like, you know, they're not widely available. They're not widely available. Now, you can get to a point where you can make your own font. You can make it, you know, if you want to get that sophisticated, they got the programs out there. You can teach you how to make your own. I'm not that sophisticated, nor do I have time for all of that. But that, yeah, you can make fonts. They have software for you to make your own fonts. In other words, if you want to duplicate fonts, you can do so. Very nice. All right. right. I think I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably giving y'all ass too much information, but I'm, <laughs> you know, but, but no. it's good information to know. But go ahead. Uh, I think that that was the questions that I had written down. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. All right. Let me go to, uh, I think that's it, ain't it? Oh, no. Let me see. Quinn. Quinn, you had, you had a question, Quinn. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, what's happening, bro? What's going on? How you doing? Oh, man. Just, 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 just tuning in, man. Uh, dropping some jewels. I hope everybody, you know, that's on the call. I mean, uh, on the webinar, uh, you know, taking it in, do your own research, you know. Uh, we do this for entertainment purposes only, you know. <laughs> Thank you for putting that in for me. I did forget to say it because I do be saying too much on some of these things sometimes. But, you know, the thing about it is it's this. Let me let me say this to everybody. You know, it's like it's just knowledge. It's a free exchange of knowledge. I'm not instructing anybody to go out there to do anything illegal or fraudulent. I'm not suggesting that. I, what I am telling you is to remain private and understand that public and private don't mix, but the public is a reflection of the private. Everything that I am showing you began in the private. It didn't begin in the public. All these right. checks, negotiable instruments and things like that, that came from merchants doing business privately. Okay, and these have been adopted. That's what the UCC is, the Uniform Commercial Code. It was adopted in the public through acts and uh, things of that nature, through different legislatures and so forth. They copied what was already going on from different merchants that have been doing business for uh, like this for all over the world for the last 6,000 years. So don't think that these people have a monopoly on any of this. They didn't. Now, as far as regulated instruments, regulated instruments are in the public. When you start putting routing numbers or anything that would give any type of impression that this is some sort of um, instrument that is issued from a financial institution in the public. Okay, now you're causing yourself, you're, 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 you're reaching and you're causing yourself some problems. But the well, thing about it is this, is people have to understand that private negotiable instruments, when you talk about private bonds 
and you know things like that um if you know what a customer anybody know what a customer information sheet is a customer I uh I don't even know if I can find one on here. Com customer information sheet. That might be one. Let me see. I know if you um if you go to the post office and ask for a um a firm mailing book. Yeah, firm mailing book. That's what I was trying to think of the name. Yeah. Firm mailing book. I think it's uh 30, 38, 38 I think. Right. Yeah. This is what a this is a client information sheet, but what it is is it's a firm mailing book. That is exact. I can't. I thank you for tell, saying that. I keep forgetting the name of that book, but it's called a firm mailing book. Let me pause real quick, and I'm so glad you said that. Firm mailing book, and they look like this, and that's what was in. I was just showing you in cracking the code too. Is uh, I was just showing you what a where is it at? Right here. Here's your return receipt green card. This is a firm mailing book right here. All right, where you record all of your registered mail uh, and so forth in your mailings. And it's called a firm mailing book. You need to get one of those. All right, and you'll see in here also, I want to show you all this. And also, too, if they, you know, um, some of them might tell you, oh, we don't, oh, we don't carry those no more, or whatever. And they'll try to, you know, give you some, uh, and I went through, I went through hoops trying to get it. Uh, oh, uh, uh, we, we don't use those no more because it's not a high volume of commercial. Uh, you know, they'll give you all kinds of excuses, but uh, go to like a, uh, a huge post office that, you know, and they have it. And 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 see, that's another thing. People have to understand the, the post office have been instructed. They know people out here are doing this. They know they're supposed to give you stuff, but they do stuff to try to get you to give up and go away. A lot of stuff they'll just tell you just to make you go away. And that's why you got to be persistent to get what you want. They got to give it to you. Okay. They got to give it to you. But they try to just just try to make you go away at first. That's what that's what's going on. And, right. And then, and then on, the, on not to cut you off. Then once you open that first page, man, it tells you. Hold on, let me pull mine out right now. Right, right here in front of me. That's that first page. Uh, it tell you kind of the kind of mail matters, negotiable instruments, instruments payable to bearer. So this book, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, man. I <laughs> know. I tell you, I already said it. I already know. I'm I'm in here teaching off the top of my head, but I've read all of that that you're talking about too. That's why I know. That's why when she said earlier that certified mail, she might be right. Is she right about the certified mail? Because uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, in that firm mailing book, yeah, they got uh, uh, they got certified mail in there too, and the post, uh, whatever, uh, whatever clerk you're dealing with, they got a post. I mean, they got a stamp. They assign their name in that book. Right. Not an instrument. Right. Right. So, so she acting in a in a capacity of the postmaster. Postmaster. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and because that's what they've been all they've been deputized too. That's one thing people have to understand is that the clerks, deputy sheriffs, police officers, all of them like got, you know, there's one person that fills the office and then he deputizes. It's called delegation of authority doctrine. They can delegate authority. Okay. That's why I tell people, I say, understand separation of powers and understand delegation of powers doctrine. You need to understand delegation of powers doctrine. That is important too. But you understand the function of government, how government operates. Um, right here, we got a certified promissory note. And you can see a lot of people you'll see on the internet have claimed they're using these and doing all kind of incredible things. But right here in Cracking the Code, the third edition, you can see here is one that was put together pretty good, uh, if, if I might say so uh, myself. Um, and you can see how he put his note. He called it a note number. Somebody was asking me about 
uh, the uh, check number, item number. You see, he put his that's the initials of his name, and right here he put. Uh, I I thought it might be the date of his birth or the date. That's March twenty eighth, two thousand and two, and then he put JJ. I don't know what that is, but this is his own convention. He made that up. You can make up your own. The thing about it is, is that once you select a convention that you're going to use, you need to maintain it and organize all of your correspondence through that. That is what is important. It doesn't matter what you make. It matters with you being consistent and sticking to whatever it is you choose to use and not changing up. And uh, so this is a this is a negotiable instrument. Yeah, you see right here, March 20. There it is right there. There's the date, March 28, 2002. And you see it did was number over here and order. Chase Manhattan Bank paid to the order of. He has the amount written out. This instrument is tendered by the undersigned respondent, John H. Doe, here in Maker, in good faith, and in accordance with laws codified under UCC 1-103-1104, 1201-42830, 3103-A6, 3104-AB, and public policy at House Joint Resolution 192, June 5, 1933, as full satisfaction of an alleged debt claimed and allegedly owed in favor of payee. Herein, in other words, Chase Manhattan and I don't know, Hat Mortgage Co Corporation, doing business as a debt collector as per payee, debt collector's presentment. And okay, so you have, now notice you use the word allege, alleged, because what he did was he he did an administrative process as a conditional acceptance. Uh, he didn't do an all-out acceptance, meaning if you can verify who you are and that you are indeed a creditor, then you can cash this. All right, this is what kind of process is being used in here. Okay, so he sent him a promissory note so he's, everything is alleged, alleged creditor, alleged account number, alleged amount due. A true and correct copy of presentment is attached here too, made fully part hereof and included herein by reference. This statement constitutes maker's promise for paying this instrument upon presentment and endorsement at maker's location. As an operation of law, payee debt collector tacitly consents and agrees that there is a court and satisfaction by use of this instrument for satisfying payee's debt collector's claim and maker is hereby discharged from liability of this alleged account, and the obligation is suspended in accordance with law as codified at UCC 3-310B, 3-311, and 3603. Maker does not waive timeliness. However, if payee debt collector needs additional time, payee debt collector must present maker with a written request for additional time within a reasonable time, setting forth the reason payee debt collector requests an extension of time, with good cause shown. The acceptability of such requests received by maker from payee debt collector is conditional upon approval by maker. In the event this instrument is not presented for payment within a reasonable period of time, and there has been no request for an extension of time with good cause shown, payee debt collector tacitly consents and agrees that payee debt collector has no bona fide verifiable claim regarding this alleged account. I love that verbiage right there. I love that because time is of the essence. They don't have as long as they want to make presentment on an instrument. It's usually 10 days. Pay debt collector tacitly consents and agrees that the debt collector has a duty for preventing this alleged account from damaging maker in any way. And the debt collector confesses judgment. I confess judgment, if you don't know what that is, is that we don't have to go to court. That Confess judgment is what every one of you signed in a car contract, which is why the car company can come and repossess your car without taking you to court. Because in that contract, you find, you sign what is called a confession of judgment. Go look at it yourself. And maker reserves the right for initiating a counterclaim against debt collector and for filing the claim against the bond of any responsible party, including debt collector and all principals, agents, assignees of debt collector whose acts of missions result in tort damages against maker. Now, this right here is a contract, okay? These are the kind of negotiable instruments I really like because they cannot be misconstrued as something fraudulent. They are intended what they are intended for as a contract, as an agreement of the parties that the acceptance of this particular instrument constitutes a discharge of the obligation and a release of any type of 
um, lien against the property of the person who makes uh, uh, the maker of the drawer of the particular instrument. Okay. These are the things I like. All right. And I read them because you got to get some sense and some idea of where this is coming from. These are very put together. The documents in this book were put together very well. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I think people came out with other versions of cracking the code to start taking people away from stuff. I'm like, man, it's like, okay, they came out with all this powerful information. And now it seems like they're watering it down. Like everything seems like getting watered down now. It's like, nah, 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 nah. I, I'm not falling for that. And the reason you don't fall for certain things is because if you are, if you read this information and you truly understand it, you can see when somebody's watering something down. You'll be able to see it for yourself. I'm like, look, this is not as powerful as this over here. Okay, look like somebody got to y'all and said, took some teeth out of this or something like that. That's what it looks like to me. And so I got my, per this is just my personal opinion. I'm giving y'all my opinion on something right now. Um, you know, I have an affinity for certain things because this is what this is the sage I learned. So I could be biased. OK, however, uh, I'm not biased in the fact of instructing you to read everything and gain a thorough understanding of what you're doing so you can make your own decision about things and not just do something because somebody else tells you to do it. Um, right. Right. And then another thing, too, man. Uh, like, like you always be stressing about a study group, you know, you know, me and this guy, you know, uh, partner of mine, you know, that's all we do. You know, we always in the gym, you know, like, 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 uh, like, like Tom Brady, Tom Brady, in a, Tom Brady in that room, he clicking. When I, clicking. when I, when I started, when I started this, it was three of us. Right. I was with him all the time and we all bounced stuff off each other, got stuff from each other. It was three. I was not by myself when I when I was learning this. I, it was at first I was in jail, and then I had them sending stuff to me in jail. Then when I got out of jail, that's all I hung with was these guys, and we were we were together all the time for at least two three years. And you know, just we and and what's good about having like being a part of something like that is because everybody gets access to something everybody else don't have. You know, especially when all when the whole group is very was into it real tough. Hey, hey, look, man, look what I found. Check this out. I'm like, oh man, that's that's some good stuff. Let me, you know what I'm saying? It's like everybody, you got three, three heads are better than one. Two oh, yeah. heads are better than one. Okay. Right. That, that's gonna always be true. All right. So yeah, being a part of a group is a good thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. And 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 then you know, I mean, two four, four, five, six, seven, eight eyes is better than two because you, you know what I'm saying? You might miss something. You know, you might miss something and your let partner you might what, catch you. Let me tell you how me and my partners had it set up. I was the best writer. So I would write the documents. My my homeboy, he was he he had he, his attention to detail was better than all of ours. It would never fail. I would write something, he would find misspellings, uh the, all kind of stuff. And I'd be looking at it like, man, I did not see. He would find everything. If it was something wrong with the document, he would find it. So we had a system set up. I'd prepare the documents. Nothing left until it went through him. He'd read it. He'd come, hey, man, you fucked up right here. You need to change this. And I'd look at it, and I'd be like, I did not see when I did that. I I just didn't see. <laughs> you know, and it, it's like, and, you know, so, yeah, you know, you got eyes on it. I had another friend, he's a, he had his own law firm, and he told me, he said, nothing leaves my law firm until three attorneys read it. Because everything that leaves his law firm represents the firm. Because right. nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good, as good as I am, I make mistakes. I, I was, there was on the website, I wonder how many people saw this on my website. There was on the website, where is this at? That was on the website right here. How many y'all caught this? For the longest, I didn't even see it until yesterday. I spelled, what did I spell wrong? Uh, recording. I spelled, it was R-E-G-O-R-D-I-N-G-S. Now, how long has this web, website been up? And... Nobody saw that. How many people didn't see that? 
And I just saw it yesterday. I'm like, damn, I misspelled recordings. You yeah, know, I didn't, I didn't catch it. And I'm always I'm always on here. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just saw it yesterday. I just changed that yesterday that I, I didn't even notice that I misspelled recordings. So that's the thing why it's good to be a part of a group and have people to double check what you're doing because the best of us makes mistakes. OK, what sets you apart is your thoroughness in uh, reviewing your work. That's what makes you good. It's like, OK, you did this document. Now have other people review it, look it over, uh, verify it and check it. OK, that's where the thoroughness of it comes in. You're being thorough by allowing other eyes to look at it, make sure everything is correct. Grammar structure. They got something called Grammarly out here. OK, I would suggest that everybody download this program because it's free. It's a free writing assistant. OK, and it pops up on my computer, whether I'm on YouTube, whether I'm on Facebook, whether I'm writing something in Word or something like that. It pops up. Say, hey, you misspelled a word. <laughs> you know, you need to change that. Or this is uh, this sentence structure is not correct. You need to change this. All right. All right. All Download right. that program and use it. You know, make sure that your grammar is correct also. And I'm not saying I'm like, once again, in no kind of way am I trying to posture myself as some sort of authority in grammar. I actually had a guy who is an expert in grammar. He's a friend of mine, expert. When I say expert, I mean, I'm talking about an expert in grammar. And he's constantly on me about stressing the importance of, of, of improving my grammar. He said, look, you're in front of a lot of people. You know, I'm still, I still kind of got a lot of a little hood in me. I know y'all can tell. I just got that hood streak, just ain't left all the way yet. You're like, man, I don't want to sit here and master grandma. You know, I'm like, I got time for all that, man. Hey, they know what the hell I'm saying. You know what it, but I I understand what he's saying. It is important. It is very, very important to master grammar. Right. It's right. important. It's important. Too, bro. Uh, another thing too, and uh, you know, I don't take up too much time. Man, when they talk about, and you, you say this all the time about people, people talking about they didn't saw the devil. Man, a couple weeks ago, when I went in that courtroom, I, I, hey, I faced the devil. Man, if you ain't never been in that situation, don't let nobody tell you do this and do that. If they never been in no courtroom. <laughs> The courtroom, I mean, the courtroom will teach you things. And like I said, if you go in there and ask the right questions too, you're going to see, they're going to pull their mask off. That It's all about asking the right questions. Knowing what, you know, what I, you, you know what else I did too? I was rehearsing so much to where I was scatterbrained. And, and just like you said earlier, I was like, man, when I got home, I said, like, damn, man, I should have said this. I should have said Dad. Yeah, you're going to you're going to forget. But here's the thing. Over time, like when people listen to me and I just rattle stuff off the top of my head, you got to understand I've been doing this 14 years. I teach it. I say it over and over on the radio. You know, repetition is just when you do it so much and start repeating it, it becomes a natural part of you. And then it comes out naturally. It's not something you have to think about. You will you know, like when you're in court, it's called thinking on your feet. You got to be able to think on your feet. OK, if you're going to be in court, in, in court, you have to be able to think on your feet. If you're if you're not very good at thinking on your feet, you're not going to do very well in court. And the best way that I can suggest that you become good at thinking on your feet is memorizing things to say in court. For instance, I'll give you all an example of what I'm talking about. I. There is this document. Called Court Survival Guide. It is very good. I love this document. All right. Court survival guide. All right. Whole thing is about how to handle yourself in court. Best document I've seen. Um, I only thing about it is that they kind of flip back and forth from public and private. They kind of give you how to operate in the public, and how to operate in the private, too, which is good because you need to know everything. You need to know both, in my opinion. But this right here, when you get down here. And this is even in one man out as well. It's even one man out. All of this. This is about, uh, and you hear this lady in this video right here. 
um, this lady right here, she talks about it too, talking about asking the nature and cause of it. When you go back and listen to this video, listen to the part in here where she talks about it's real good for you to go in and ask the question about the nature and cause of the action. What she, all the old, see, she's been doing this since about 2000. Okay, all the old school people, she, which she's been doing it longer than me. She's been doing this longer than me. All the old school people know all this stuff. They know all this stuff. And what she's referring to is this right here. She's referring to this dialogue. This is some, some old school dialogue. All right, and um, right here. Here is right here. Learn to nullify the judge's lame excuses. You might hear the judge say, well, I don't have it, the law or the evidence here in front of me, when you attempt to state legal proof. This is the judge's childish attempt. This is the judge's childish attempt to ignore the law or the evidence supporting your defense. So take your copy up and put it right under his or her nose so that there will be no more excuses. The judge may even laugh off your embarrassing question and call a recess and a display of false authority in an attempt to change the subject when the court reconvenes. Don't let it pass. Keep the issues in his or her face until it is adequately resolved. Do not move on until you get the answers. More lame excuses. You might get, I'm sorry, you'll have to talk to the legislatures about that as I only enforce the law. Or you'll have to talk to a licensed attorney about that because I can't give you legal advice. Or this is not the proper form for addressing that question. That issue is not relevant to the case. This is what you will often get when the judge knows that he cannot answer your question without incriminating him his or herself, which is very true. You must not let them get away without giving an answer or making a legal determination. Some award-winning comebacks are, and, and you memorize these. Your Honor, I'm not contesting the laws you suggest. I am merely demanding that you interpret it in accordance with your own oath of office. And I'm asking you to do your job as referee and to identify the source of the law you are interpreting. Now, please answer the question. Or you can say, Your Honor, you and I both know that the legislatures and you are all part of the same legislative branch because you're in Article I courts, operating provisionally under Article I, Section 8, Clause 17. And there are no legislators here to identify the law and arbitrate a fair case. This is your job. And I'm simply asking you to do your job. Now, please answer the question. Or, Your Honor, I'm not asking you for legal advice. I have my legal counselors for that. I'm simply asking you to kindly identify yourself, the court's legal jurisdiction, and the nature and cause of the accusation. I'm asking you to identify the code of written law which supports your ruling. I'm asking you to do your job. Now, please, please, could you please answer the question for the record? Your Honor, if this is not from uh, the, this, uh, here's another one. Your Honor, if this is not the form for addressing this issue, then how can you now legally apply the issue for the first time in this case? If this is not the proper form, then I motion this court to provide the form required to resolve this issue before we proceed. Okay, this is how you prepare. Prepare your words and you will be listened to. That's what it says in the Sirach, in the Catholic Bible. All right. All right. So these are comebacks. All right. Now up here, you will get a. Um, it tells you and make sure that you're in a court of record. If they ask, if you understand, say no, admit nothing, ask questions, act dumb, play smart. OK, that's one of 48 laws of power. Play a sucker to get a suck. Just catch a sucker. Um, See the co common law equity and admiralty, uh, man. I mean, this thing is so good. It it got it is chalk full of things to say in court, and you need to commit it to memory. Like right here is the dialogue. Additional useful information: knowing your rights and constitution to empower your confidence and authority, not to argue about it. Declaration of Independence Part Two: Governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. Without the proper consent, the law is unjust. Declaration of Independence Part 2, when a government becomes destructive, it is the right of the people to alter it. Allowable jurisdiction given by the Constitution, Article 3, Section 2, the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law, common law, equity, and admiralty jurisdictions. Also applicable is the general statement made in Article 4, uh, Article 6, clause, uh, I'm sorry, 
Article 6, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution and the laws of the United States, notice they say the Constitution and the laws of the United States, two separate things. And which shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the con Constitution. No law passed contrary to this Constitution shall have any validity. If there is any conflict, the Senate loses. Congress shall make no law bridging the freedom of speech, all this, and down here. Facing the judge and prosecutor, sequence of maxims, you need those maxims. Where is that thing at? You def definitely need to hire a licensed court reporter. Stand on the Sixth Amendment. Got to. Got to know the Sixth Amendment. And okay, here it is right here. Step one, forcing the judge to answer questions. When the judge asks if you understand the charges against you, you say no. The judge will then probably try to intimidate you by explaining, uh, explaining them again in a, condescend a condescending or stern voice or by implying that you are lying. Here, and they do it all the time because they follow a script, too. They are administrators. They have a script that they follow. That's why they all say the same shit in every state, because they are all following a script. Here's where you must politely present your need to have answers so that the judge must decide to answer your questions. The judge will have to ask you exactly what it is that you do not understand. No problem. Just reply. OK, and here's your first reply. Your Honor, the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution grants me the right to know the nature and cause of this action. You're bringing me uh, you're bringing against me and it grants you the court the duty to tell me. I do not understand the nature and cause of this action which has been brought against me. The judge will have to uh, the judge will have to allow you to ask him or her your questions. No exceptions. The judge will probably say, what is it that you would like to know? All right. An arraignment. Do you understand the charges? No. OK, here's the whole thing. I would go in an arraignment. Do you understand the charges? No. What do you understand? Announcement one. Your Honor, the Sixth Amendment grants me blah, 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 what you just said up under here. Judge agrees to answer questions. Okay, what is it you would like to know? Is this a criminal or civil action? Is it criminal or civil? He's going to say criminal. If he says civil, objection, let the record show criminal action, wrong court, dismiss. Motion to dismiss. The Constitution grants this court two criminal jurisdictions. Which one is this? Judge panic, judge stalls, judge tells truth, or the judge lies? They didn't write this very well, and so it's hard for people to understand what's going on. But either the judge is going to tell the truth or the judge is going to lie. Uh, dismiss plan two. Go see attorney. Let the record show. Common law jurisdiction. Objection. No evidence. Oath of office. Injured party or sworn complaint. Everything in here is about operating in court. These are some powerful, powerful things to say in court. This is a document that I would highly suggest that people master is the court survival guide. I've used a lot of this in court. The most powerful question that you can ask. And these are called steering questions right here. And here it is right here. Your Honor, the Constitution grants the court two crim uh, different criminal jurisdictions. One is a criminal jurisdiction under the common law, and the other is a criminal uh, action that constitutes a condition of contract under criminal aspects of a colorable admiralty jurisdiction. Under which of these two jurisdictions does this court intend to try this criminal action? You can see that I have this committed to uh, memory. Not wanting to answer this, the judge might just dismiss the case now, but most will try. Uh, still try to go ahead with it. The only choice now are to admit to which jurisdiction applies or to avoid answering. Nine times out of ten, they're going to avoid answering or give you a uh, non-responsive answer, which means they don't answer the question. They'll say something like, we're operating under the state and federal constitution. That is not an answer to the question. I know the question I'm asking you comes directly out of the Constitution under the Sixth Amendment, which protects my right to know the nature and cause of the action. And what I'm attempting to do is find out the nature of this action. I know the cause. You told me I got a traffic ticket. That was the cause. What is the nature? Under which two of these jurisdictions are you operating under? Common law or amnesty? Colorable amnesty. Is this some sort of contract? It's a contract that they got you in there. Everybody knows the driver's license, those registrations, they're all contracts. And that is what this lady is talking about in this video, rescinding those contracts. She said, you got to rescind those contracts. 
She's alluding to the secure party process. She's an old schooler. A lot of new school. I'm from the old school. I understand everything she's talking about. Everything. This new school shit that y'all are doing is being made up for people who want to make money. And uh, agents out there throwing stuff in and doing all kinds of stuff. The people in the old school were much more, much more informed, much more knowledgeable. They had their um, study groups were much more uh, all together. They had organization, more organized and everything. These people today, you still have some because a lot of them come from the old school and so forth. But a lot of this new stuff that's on YouTube, man, this is some old microwave, get rid, uh, get remedy quick type stuff. Man, I don't watch none of that stuff. I watch none of that stuff. It's garbage. And on top of what you're saying, uh -huh. go I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this again. This is entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, we'll put it like this. I'm not giving legal advice. If you le need legal advice, go and seek the assistance of an attorney. All right, that should handle it. All right. <laughs> 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 All right, wait a minute. I gotta ask some more, answer some more questions. All right, let me go uh, on to the next question. Ricardo Florimon. How you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, I got a uh, <laughs> about the the birth certificate bond. All right, master bond. Okay. Now, I mean, I'm sure things things were changed. So I just want to verify a couple of things to make sure before I send him send out my package. Uh, well, nothing's changed. What changed? I mean, the information in there. I don't know if it's, it doesn't seem correct to me. All right, let it's, me look at it. Let me look at it. Let me look at it quick. Uh, and you know what? If you change if you change anything in this Dropbox, it is recorded. Everything that anybody does to anything in this Dropbox is recorded. If somebody has changed something on the document or found a way to change something on the document, I'm going to go and look and I'm going to kick that person out. It's uh right. yeah, it's on the bond, it's on the bonds and it's birth 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 certificate bond, power bond. All right, let me look and see. All right, uh what is it in reference material bonds? All right, let's see. Birth certificate bonds. Was it template? Yeah, keep going. No, on on the on the ghost images. Ghost images. Under under ghost images. Oh, under ghost images. All right, right here. Okay. All right. All right. Got it up. So show me what's what's going on. Okay, now in the verbiage. What it's what it says. Uh, J Jane Doe is a principal, correct? Yes. Now next to it will be Stephen uh, Munich, whatever his name is. Yeah. Well, it has it as he's the holder in due course. I do. He's like the wrong. registered, that's he's wrong. A registered holder. That, right? That's wrong. That is yeah. That is wrong. And you know what? That's that stuff that, um, you know, I had to go back and look at that myself. It, it when because I didn't make this bond. I didn't create this. All right. This is not my creation. But I'm glad that that's brought up. I brought this up before. I had to go back and look at this and I said, who put this M as the holder in due course? He's not the holder in due course. He's the holder. And you're absolutely correct. That is patently wrong. So he's a registered holder. That's it. Yeah, right. He's the holder up here. Okay. But somebody put down here, he's the holder in due course. He's not the holder in due course. You are the holder in due course. You are the issuer of this instrument. But you know why you're the holder in due course? Because it's telling you what? It's telling you maturity. Up on maturity at 11.59.59 p.m., the secretary should mark this bond canceled and what? Return the bond. If he's the holder in due course, he don't have to return it. Right? Correct. Okay. And so, now, and you have two registered numbers. Number it says registered number. Where where did you get the second registered number from? I got, this one, I, once again, I did not create this. <laughs> I, I didn't create this. Um, the red the holder in due course. The registered mail number is from your first registered mail package. Correct. All right. And then the other one is the bond number that comes on. The, the, because this is a package too that's going to come with your bond all this is going to be in a package too 
So that's what these two numbers are. One is the see the first, the second register mail number and first register mail. It's only two of them. The first Correct. register mail number is your first, your first one first that you mail off. Right. And the number two will be a will be the bond number. That's exactly right. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. That's what that's what I was confused confused about. Yeah, and, and it confuses a lot of people. I need to go in here and change. That's why I started uh changing, but you need to and and see what you just did which is which is great thank you for doing that because it lets me know that you're reading it all right because that is exactly 100 percent correct jacob lou is or the, the secretary is not the holder in due course you know how many people turn in bonds with this verbiage on there all right before they got a thorough understanding of what a holder in due course and see how that conflicts he's called the holder in due course but down here you're telling him to return the bond Correct. This is, why they look at you. this is why they look at you and like this motherfucker don't know what he's doing. You know what the fuck he's doing. You know, and that's why. It, that's why. So thank you for that. You're absolutely correct. No problem. And 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 we could change it from uh, they have you at two hundred billion. We change it back to hundred million, right? If you choose. Well, like I said earlier, I don't have you know the hundred million um, on some respected authority. I think I'll say. Is why I kind of start going with the hundred million because as my knowledge increased, I start looking more toward uh, trading platforms because I'll start getting those circles of people, and it affected me, and that's why I went with the hundred million. And you see some other people. That's why usually when you see somebody has a hundred million on there, they're probably got some knowledge about trading platforms or something like that. Okay. That's why you would see it. However. There's nothing written in stone that dictates how much the bond can be because your credit is unlimited. You you know just really you know really really basically you can make it for whatever amount you want, you know. But you think you're gonna spend two hundred million dollars? Yeah. You know, uh, realistically, do you think you're gonna spend a hundred million dollars in your lifetime? No. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know. Now the reason we make it so high because in these criminal cases, um. They, those bonds are high, you know, $2 million each, like, uh, like a, uh, charge could be $2 million and stuff like that. So if you're the kind of person that go to jail a lot, you know, yeah, you, you know, you could probably, you know, eat it up a lot, you know, but that doesn't happen. That's realistically, that doesn't happen, you know, or whatever. So the, the amounts I personally have not been able to find anything written in stone. The only thing that we're going by is um, when you see that 100 million is people who are dealing with trading platforms and understand bonds that are being introduced on trading platforms. And that's why they're doing it. All right. And I got w one more question. All right. Go ahead. On the W8 or the w WBN. Uh huh. That should we use the. The 98 trust number, the foreign trust number, or the our security number? No, well, no what, what do you mean? On, hold on, let me pull it back up. The 98 BEN using the... The W8, it asks you for your account number. Yeah, well, okay, you must have got in late. The account number is the... Uh, your account yeah. number is your registered mail number. Okay, let me see if I can explain this to, to y'all, make it... Because there's two numbers that you're putting down, the registered mail number, and then there's another account number, which is one the, account, is, the, one account, the, the account payable. Yeah, one of them is your account number off of your exemption ID number, which is your social security number without dashes. So you are using a social security number, not the, not the, the, the 98 number. No, you're not. You, well, you know what? I'm going to put it like that. You can use your 98 number. I can't say no to that. I can't say no to that. So it's, it's your choice, basically. Yeah, it's your choice. I can't okay. say no to that. I cannot say no. To, I cannot say no to that. That nine eight number. Look, is uh, the more I study, the, you got to understand that nine eight. The, that nine eight number is a person. It is a person, and it, it would make sense to use it. So yes, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't say no to that. I can't, it's not written in stone. And the more I am deeper and deeper, I delve in the trust, the more I'm transferring everything into my trust. So yes. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, let me go to Ron Mason. Uh, I do not have my hand up. I do not have a question. 
Oh, okay. I thought you had a hand up. Sorry. All right, y'all. That's going to be it today. It's 1.30. I know I talked a lot. I will be back on tomorrow for part two. We'll do, we're going to go over it again. Um, I won't answer any questions. I'll go straight in, and we'll start constructing a negotiable instrument tomorrow at 9 o'clock at night. Okay? So, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I will see y'all tomorrow at 9 p.m. This recording will be available um, probably sometime later on today. That's the process and everything. And uh, when I get through with it, it'll process, all right? So that's it for me today. Y'all take it easy. Peace to the gods. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.